uh, we are recording. I feel like death right now. I don't even know what I'm doing. This might be a 20 minute episode. <laughs> I don't know. Like I don't one, know. one step at a time. One of those days. Yeah. Uh, you know what I've been noticed? So I switched my program around. Uh, yeah. I started doing two a day training sessions. Oh, fuck that. <laughs> I, I like to finish my prep like that. You know why? Cause it, uh, I take my cardio out. Yeah, you'd rather not do cardio and do more weights. Well, it's not, it's not that I'd rather. It's uh, I'm trying to save my legs, right? Like I notice yeah. when, I, when I start doing two sessions of cardio a day, like my legs start to flatten out. Yeah. And because I'm coming into this prep uh, a little smaller than I was previously, and my legs are a little bit down in size. Okay. I'm, I'm trying to maintain like every bit of muscle I have, right? So yeah, I, yeah. I already noticed a change. Uh, so Sunday was my last day of cardio, and I already noticed a difference. Like my legs have filled back out. Yeah. So I think the plan is working, but what's happening now is every day this week, post, post morning workout, I get this like super low blood sugar drop. Yeah. And like, it's hitting me right now. <laughs> so I can imagine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I feel so like I, I, I've, I've just trained now myself and that's only one a day. And I know that's fucking taxing. So let alone two, getting that twice is a bit of a slump. And then you got to bring yourself back up for that second one. Well, it's a little bit easier. It's, I, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to paint a picture that's not true. No, no, no. Yeah. The second workout is. Is it smaller? It's easier. Yeah. It's like more, they're more pump workouts. Okay. And even, and even the first workout is not like, <sighs> like when I was doing one workout a day, it was like 110% leave everything on the gym floor. Right. Yeah. Now it's like the morning workouts, like 95 and the afternoon workouts, like 85 Mm, mm, mm. so it's like but i did it on purpose because i'm trying not to get injured this time because i always seem to get injured like in the last three or four weeks it's about getting to the end of the race un unharmed isn't it so you know it's smart it's smart a lot of people don't think that a lot of people think foot on the gas you know keep the revs high but you know it's better there's a certain level of sensibility and and being smart that comes with this and you know because you've been around long enough to understand that um and you're more vulnerable. Like at this point, your body's much more susceptible to injury. You're drier. You know, you're, you're pissing the water all day. So your hydration levels are fucking non-existent. And you have to take that into account. So that's smart. Smart, man. It's just you being a wise man. Yeah, I... Um, I... One second, let me just... Okay, no worries. Uh, here we go. I got Ian coming on. So oh, he's, cool. he's joining. I am... Um, it's funny because... Today, my training was the first one where I felt oh, really like, oh, sorry. let's get this, sorry, I'm going to change my screen so I can see everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's better. Can't hear you, Ian. Yeah. I'm digging Ian's beard. You hear me now? Yeah, I got you. Speaking of beards, I've let my shit completely go. It's like gray, and it's like growing up to my fucking eyes now. Yeah, like yours goes up really high, eh? <laughs> My, I, my, I just trimmed it before this, so I'm good to go. <laughs> if I don't, if I don't take care of the shit, it'll grow like all the way up to like my eyeballs. <laughs> 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 anyway, James, you were saying before Ian got on, you're saying your prep is. Uh... I was just uh, saying today's like the first workout where I felt really, really zoned in. Like, I watch a lot of Justin Compton videos. I'm quite a fan. You know, I'm friends with Justin, and I really like his kind of mindset towards training and how. Every time I've ever watched him train, it looks like he's not concerned about anything else going on in the world and he's just in his own little world. Yeah. And today was that session. I like just trained with Louis and everything was just so fucking spot on and I didn't give a shit who was in there. Normally I'm aggravated by people being around me. Mm. You know, it's getting close to the show. I don't want people talking to me, but I don't know. Something in the air today was just like something's clicked and it feels like it's taken all the years of bodybuilding to get to that point where for some reason I'm content with yeah. the feeling of... Uh, everything i think i'm finally understanding that we're very fortunate the three of us yeah. in the position we're in to be able to do this as a fucking living um, Un until tomorrow you're gonna go in tomorrow and you're gonna oh, feel yeah. you're gonna that's what i noticed because some days you go in like 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 this this whole week i've gone in and let, like me ian me and james were talking i changed my program around i've been doing two a days but the two a day training sessions are like they're not a hundred percent they're like 90 percent sure and I'm doing it so I don't get injured going to the show. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the way I see it is I'm not going to build any more muscle. Like at this point, I'm just trying to like keep my muscle round that I do have and like make, yeah, yeah stay healthy. So anyway, 
all this week, I've been like you, James. I kind of go in. I haven't really even seen anybody. I kind of just do my own thing and I leave. But I know there's that day where you go in and it's just like, it, it's the opposite. You're not as focused. Somebody's bugging you. Something is, triggers your mindset, yeah, right? It's like, yeah. it's like one day you think you have it figured out and the next day it's like you're back to square one. I, my question is, is it us or is it certain individuals? Because it's always the same individuals that make you feel that way. And some, <laughs> you know, you know, there's a certain someone that comes in the gym and like, oh, for fuck's sake, they turned up. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, and you, there's yeah. a few in my gym and the second I see them, I'm like, headphones on, pretend I can't hear them, see them. Yeah. You know? I'm just like, fuck, don't look at them. Don't make eye contact. Fuck, you know? Yeah. For me, yeah, for me, there, there's one guy. And I think he listens to the podcast. I hope he doesn't know who I'm talking about him. But <laughs> there's, there's one guy that like has to recreate every machine into a different exercise oh, than it's yeah, supposed yeah. to be. Yeah. And every time I see him walk in the gym, I just start to fuck it. It puts me in the worst mood because I just, I'm waiting to see him do something dumb. And it's an, I know it's going to set me off. And yeah. it's just, it's that guy, right? That, but, that same guy, if you, when you're in the off season and you're fat and happy, do you laugh at him and find it hilarious? Uh, or do you, oh, you still think he's a fucking bellend? No, no, he's still a fucking bellend. Like, I can't fucking... I can't stand... <laughs> oh, so it's really bad now, then. So yeah. if you feel like that in the off-season with this gentleman, yeah. then, yeah. yeah, fuck. She, I feel for yeah. you, bro. It's totally us, though, man. Because it, it's, it, it's like things that come at you in the off-season, you can rationalize them, you put them... You, you store them away, you, whatever, you brush them off. Yeah. During, during prep, it seems like every molehill becomes a mountain. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's like you have to you have to recognize that it's your own brain and it's like not other people's fault. Yeah. Like it's just yeah, just yesterday I was driving home from the gym with Paul. Like he picked me up and we were on our way back from the gym and I was being a I knew I was being a dick. And uh I said to him before I got out of the car, I'm like, look, man, I just want to apologize. And he goes, For what? I'm like, I know I've been really short today with you. And I like I have because every every time you try to speak to me, I was just really like abrupt and like short with my well, answers. Yeah. So I literally apologized to him. Like, look, just give me four more weeks, you know, you know, three, four, five weeks, whatever it is. And I'm going to be done and I'll be back to normal. But like, yeah, I, I, it's just, I think it takes us recognizing it. And then like just asking people's forgiveness. Well, I but, remember the very first show I ever did when I was getting Melissa. Um, so this would have been Ottawa 2013. And you know, like you get into that same kind of like, we were kind of short, abrupt and like not quite like connected the same and stuff. And she was like, she'd never been around bodybuilders, period. Like, zero in her life. Yeah. So she was like, fuck this, he doesn't love me, all this kind of stuff. And my, my best friend, Mike, at the time, he's like, just wait till the show's done. I swear, the day the show is done, <laughs> the next day he'll be the exact same as he was before. Just promise me, please don't leave, you know? <laughs> he, like, begged her to not leave me. You just, know? Hang, just hang in there, yeah, he's yeah, gonna be like, normal. I was such in my, like, head with the show, I'm like, I don't fucking care, you know? Like, yeah. And then he's, like, begging Melissa, like, please, I trust me, it's like this every time, you know? How many times? How many times have you guys said something like "I don't give a fuck about something," oh, only yeah. only to finish your prep and have to go back and apologize to that person? Oh, yeah. All the time, every time. Yeah, yeah, your priorities completely change in your mind, like during that prep, and then yeah. the second it's over, like and you get some food new, and it's all that stress is off. I mean, your mindset completely changes, right? I've yeah. had to I've had to apologize to numerous people over the course of twenty years, yeah. just for being a dick, and then like the show get the show's over and you start eating again and you're like oh man i can't believe i was that big an asshole to that person yeah but the, the crazy thing is it literally is as soon as the show's over like yeah. literally i find i and, and i know this is nothing to do but it's the same with like being fucking horny like <laughs> uh, like honestly the so minute i've gone yeah the second the second i've had a shower <laughs> after the show i can go so why the fuck for like three weeks before a show do I not want to go near anybody? No, it's not, just... the, it, it's not the shower. It's the food. I know what you mean. Because before the show, I don't like it's – it's weird. I talk to some guys who like get hornier like as they prep. For, oh, me, no. for me, once I'm like four or five weeks out, I'm like, I can't – if I see like a sex scene on TV, I got to like change a channel. I'm like, I can't watch a shit. So I'm <laughs> well, like – it's the same, but this last prep, I was fucking just hornier than hell. I don't know why. Yeah, Ian, you sound like a beast. Because I heard, I still, I, someone asked you on one of your questions, "What have you been doing since like the show?" And you said, "Fucking more than ever." Cause it's quarantine. <laughs> I thought, well, I mean, Melissa and I are stuck in quarantine together this time. The last time I was alone, so it was just me, yeah. me and my hand. Now this time, Melissa. <laughs> true, true, true. No, but I know what you mean, James. Because it's like, as soon as I, as soon as the show's over and I eat like a slice of pizza, it's like the sex drive doesn't just come back. It comes back like. It's, it's like raging back like you can't tenfold tenfold yeah, <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, um, it's, it's all psychological, isn't it? It's all fucking yeah. psychological. Well, I mean, it's, it's hormonal, right? I mean, I think, I, I don't know. I, don't, I can't explain the physiological, phys, physiological thing that happens, but I don't know if it's like because the pressure's off because the show's over and then the, the food makes you feel better. I don't know how it all works, but like there's something that just happens where you just change immediately like the day after. Yeah. So, it's funny because um, those, those, sorry, I know that we'll move on, sorry, but those, it's funny because those few days after a show are usually the best days I find like, um, <laughs> I don't know. I just feel like even the enjoyment level of just the regular things, like going to the, sit in a, a fucking cafe and having a coffee, seems like it's so much better than it ever was. Yeah. Aren't you? Isn't it like um, your level of patience is actually enjoyable? Because I don't know if you guys are like me, but before a show, like right now, if I try to watch a movie, I get through like five minutes of it. I'm like, fuck this. I can't watch this shit. I got to go do something else. Yeah. Like my attention span is like this short, right? Yeah. yeah. But the, one of the things I enjoy the most, like right after a show, is like I'll literally put a movie on and grab like some finger foods, whatever it is, and I just sit, like to sit and enjoy actually having patience to watch a movie. Yeah, well, that's exactly what we did. Like the first two day or two when we got back from Tampa from New York, Pro and I just like chilled, fucking ate garbage food and yeah, in bed watch movies like shit that like you know, well one she was working before and then two. You know, like I couldn't sit for five fucking minutes without like, <laughs> like God, like you're you get so anxious, and, like antsy, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like you constantly feel you got like you got to be doing things. Yeah. yeah. Like people have been messaging me and they're like, I don't know how you're putting out so much content on YouTube and all this stuff, and I'm like, I don't, I just can't sit still. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like I think, I think after the show, like there's gonna be no content because I'm gonna be like relaxed yeah. again. So well, yeah. this, is, this is similar to the question I get like with because now I'm doing the Olympia and Chris is obviously going to defend his title, I get a bajillion questions of people asking me like, how do you, you know, have the energy to prep Chris while you're also prepping yourself for the Olympia? I'm like, it's so much better. Like your mind is like racing with all this shit and that's something like an outlet to put it in. I find I'm so much more diligent with my clients and stuff like that. Um, mm. Especially when you're going to defend a fucking Olympia win. I mean, like you put your energy and your mind into that and kind of off yourself and the monotony is yeah. I find way better, you know? You know what though? That's a good question because I can't imagine having the pressure of, you know, you have somebody, one of your clients is going to repeat the Mr. Olympia. Like that's humongous. Yeah. But you're also getting ready for your second Olympia, I think. Is this your yeah. second? Yeah. You're getting ready for your second Olympia. So it's like, you have a lot of pressure on yourself to want to do well, but you yeah. also have this major pressure of like, it's not just doing the work. I know you have the energy to do the work, but like just the pressure of knowing the responsibility of his win is on, is not on you, but partly on you. The thing about, it's, it's, I don't really know how to explain this because there's no like tangible, you know, reasoning behind it. But for some reason with Chris, only Chris, I feel almost no pressure as a coach. Melissa, I feel immense. With my level one clients, I feel immense pressure. But with Chris, I feel none. And I, I just, I just, I don't even know. Like this just overbearing confidence in what Chris is capable of as a, as a bodybuilder really, really puts my mind at ease. Yeah. Um, and I know that even when Chris is like at his absolute worst, Chris is still was coming second at the Olympia with like terrible, you know, autoimmune and huge flare ups. And, and that was at his like worst, worst, worst. And he was still yeah. coming second at the Olympia. So, I mean, it's not like I'm like, Oh, I can slack off. And you know, if he looks like shit, it's around, oh, he'll still be top two. It's not, the, that's not the, the thought I have. It's just, I've never really got stressed out. I mean, even in 2018 was the year his autoimmune was his worst. That was my first Olympia and Melissa was competing. And I had two amateur clients at the show. Yeah. Mm. So, I mean, I was doing, you know, two, my wife, my brother-in-law and, and two clients plus myself all for the Olympia. And I mean, it was worked fabulously. I mean, Chris mm. looked as good as he could considering how bad his flare up was. Melissa looked great. My amateur clients both won their classes. I mean, you know, I had a good showing. So, I mean, it was just, I, but Chris in particular, I don't know why I never feel any pressure with really. Do you ever feel like you want to, I don't know how to say it without just saying it. Do you ever feel like you want to like tell him to do something else so you can focus on yourself or you, you just, you like doing it? Yeah, no, I mean, I, I don't feel, I don't, it doesn't feel like a hardship at all when it comes to like Chris or Melissa or anything like that. I mean, it's, you know, I mean, Chris also, you know, like Chris knows what he's doing too, you know, I mean, yeah. like he's not someone that's like on my ass texting me all the time and stuff like that. I mean, you know, he's pretty self-sufficient and if he has, you know, things he's unsure of, he'll usually make his best judgment call. And then just when he happens to talk to me next, he'll kind of run it by me. But, yeah. um, you know, I mean, we have a pretty good groove with this, with the, you know, with the preps with him. And, um, you know, I think as each year goes past, you know, we've learned to manage his, his issues a little better and stuff. So, I mean, going into this year, I mean, I feel, I didn't feel a ton of pressure last year. I feel even less this year, even though he's defending, I actually feel less pressure. I feel 
more confident than ever that we'll win. I feel, you know, that we're way, like, I feel more at peace knowing that I have a better understanding of how to control everything with him. So, I mean, if anything, it feels like the least pressure, even though it should boast, you know? I feel like, yeah. I feel like once yeah. they made the judgment, get up, get up. I feel like once they made the judgment call that Chris was the direction they wanted to go instead of Breon. Yeah. That that's, I think, is that kind of why you have the confidence you have? Because that's, they're, yeah. they've decided, like, that's the look they want. It's like they've drawn the line in the sand that, like, Chris, this is what we're going for. And I know, like, with absolute certainty that Chris will be better every year from now on. You know, like, the 2018 was the worst. And then we got a little bit better handle on it, like I said, last year. And I feel like we're in an even better spot this year. You know, I feel like every year we kind of learn a little more about how to control things and what causes flare-ups and what doesn't. And, you know, the things we can get away with and not. Um, so I, with a hundred percent certainty, I know he'll be better than last year. He's improved in a lot of ways, you know, in the gym, as well as from a prep standpoint, I know there's a lot more we can do this year to make him better. So yeah, yeah I mean that plus like what you said, I mean, obviously, you know, they made a direction call there, um, yeah. which, which does put, you know, a sense of, of confidence in you as well. Right. How does that feel? How does that feel with, uh, you know, and I, I think, I think like uh, to bring up Logan Franklin, I feel like he's just trying to make a name for himself by picking at the top dog, but. How do you guys feel about that? Because I don't, I don't, I don't want to say, I don't want people to take this the wrong way, but I don't think he can challenge Chris personally. No, no. I mean, and like, this is no knock on Logan. I mean, I think he, you know, he just won the New York pro. So, I mean, he's obviously great, but I think he's, he's not at the point yet where I think a first call out is in his, his future. You know, I think he's still a little stringy and I think to, to be some of the guys, you know, to move up passing like a branch Chen or a Terrence or a Brayon or a Chris uh, I mean, he's going to have a really, really tough time, you know? So mm. I think, uh, you know, he showed he can get in good shape. I mean, he improved his posing. He's definitely better than he was at Tampa last year. Um, you know, I see him falling in kind of that like seven through 10, 12 range, you know? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe I don't know enough of the guys. I saw him. I, maybe I don't know enough of the classic guys because I see him a little higher than that, but you're right. I am not taking into consideration. Like I, I totally forgot about Terrence yeah. and, you know, guys not like even, no, no insult to, to, Logan, I can think of six guys right off the top of my head that I'm 100% sure can be uh, Logan. So after that, it's like seven, seventh at best in my mind. Um, you know, look, look, he's got 14 weeks. A guy could come off. We, he showed he can be in excellent condition. Conditioning in, in classic goes a long way for sure. So, yeah. you know, could he scoot up a couple places? Maybe, you know, they do a six, seven man first call out. He sneaks in the side. You know, I might beat my words for sure. But uh, I, I personally do not see him at that level. I mean, this was the same talk, like, you know, we had people with the Wesley Vissers last year and, you know, there's always going to be, you know, uh, or Steve Lorius or these guys, but then when they step on stage with these kind of calibers, like the Brayons and the Chris's, or, you know, when you had George there, um, you know, some of these guys, it, it's, there's some, a lot of fucking talent in that division, man. There'll be guys in the third call out. Then when they come out in their individuals, I'm like, this guy's going to win the fucking Olympia. Yeah, and then yeah. they step in the lineup and you're like, Oh wow. They're all this good. You know, or yeah, some guys yeah. are better. Yeah, you know, I see some guys like what was that guy's name? Uh, he works with AJ Sims, crazy X frame guy. I can't remember what his name is, you know. But you see some of these guys and they come out on their own. I'm like, this guy's fucking insane. Yeah, you know, like everyone in that division now at the Olympia level is just crazy genetic freaks with tiny waists and you know insane you know flow to their physiques. I mean, it it takes a lot to really get up into that that top five, top six. Mm, James, James, do you think? classic will ever overtake open men's bodybuilding at the olympia no i don't think it'll overtake i just think bodybuilding is bodybuilding for a reason i think it's great and um i think it has its place and it'll always be welcome and it'll always draw a crowd but i just think you're always going to want open bodybuilders because you want to push the the boundaries you know bodybuilding is about seeing how far you can go um and there's always going to be that demand and uh you know you know can i ask you what's this is it's confusing to me and i'll ask you both yeah, cool. james you can start if if society's if society deems someone like Chris to be the perfect physique that every guy wants and every girl wants to be with and whatever whatever we're going to say about it right yep. and they and they deem bodybuilders to be freaks right like mm -hmm. we're we're great but in like a freakish way right yep. nobody really wants to look like us why is it that we are the draw if if the classic guys are the guys that everybody wants to look like uh, I just think because the the Olympia itself is not Main, considered mainstream and it'll never be uh you know it's not an olympic sport it's not because it's outside those parameters where it isn't alongside other other events i mm -hmm. feel that it's in its own unique place um so it just keeps us at the arrowhead if it was if it was 
in a you know governing body like under the Olympic flag or something, it'd be a totally different story. But it's not. Um, so I think we still have our position as you know the kind of. So are you saying you think the federation is putting it there? Because I think the people no. are still saying what they. I still. I think not the that people, it's not the federation. It's the, it's, it's, I'm just saying. Like, I think the people are itself. dictating. Yeah. It's bodybuilding itself because of everything that's involved. It it, it mm-hmm. won't change because it can't change really, um, not at the level that we do. Um, if another federation opened up that just did classic and stuff, it'd probably blow up even more, maybe. Yeah. But Ian, you know, what do you what do you what, think? Yeah, I I think it's because you know that when you look at something like the pinnacle like that, those are always the the prime time events. You look at the Olympics. What's the prime time event? The hundred meter. You know the the things that are like the pinnacle of speed, the pinnacle of muscularity, the pinnacle, like the things that are at the absolute utmost above normality, you know? Like you don't want to watch the 5,000 meter steeplechase and be like, wow, this is so insane. This is the peak of human performance. You want to watch fucking freaks, you know, run 9.5 second, hundred meters. And that's like the pinnacle of human performance. And that's what I yeah. see bodybuilding is kind of in, in our yeah. echelon, you know? But- I think men's physique or class physique are like, you know, the... 200 meter and the 400 meter it's like well they're still exciting but like the 100 meters the fucking like that's the headline show you know oh. people pay the tickets yeah. to see bill heath to see the usain bolts you know like those are what that's like the the absolute top end of human performance you know is it yeah, a, I, I agree with that massively is it a matter of achievement like it, it's easier and not that okay i'm gonna say something it's gonna sound crazy but no but you're easy. right it's easier to achieve Chris's physique, even though you can't, because it's genetically put together in, a, in such yeah. a way. But si- si- size-wise, it's easier to achieve Chris's physique than it is to achieve Ian's or James or any, any like a Phil Heath. Yeah. So is that why we're considered so sought after to view? Because you don't see guys like us in a gym. You, yeah, can't, okay. you can't achieve our level that easily. It's, it's so far off, like, the normality of, like, what normal people look like, you know, and pushing the boundary so far, you know, into like that, that crazy zone, like you said, that you don't see normally, or that, you know, is just like, that looks like the completely unattainable to the average person, you know, that's where I think it's like, you know, same with like, I, you know, when I use that hundred meter analogy, like nobody watches, you know, Usain Bolt run nine, five and be like, I can do that. You know, <laughs> don't do that. you know, you might run, see yeah. a guy run the 10 K and be like, Hey, I could do that. But you know, same with classic or men's physique, you'd be like, oh, I could do that. But yeah. You know, you watch the men's open, you know, you watch Ronnie Coleman or, you know, like Justin Gatlin or these guys, you don't ever think in your mind that you can do that, you know? Yeah. 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 It's, it's like, it's like, what was your draw to bodybuilding? And most people you ask is like superheroes. Yeah. So it's the, it's the yeah. same kind of fucking thing, isn't it? You still yeah. look at them like they're beyond human, you know, capabilities. So and, even, and, that is, and that is open bodybuilding. So even though, even though James, they don't, even though they don't necessarily want to look like us or they, they admire it, they want to see it because it's crazy. They admire it. They admire yeah. it because they yeah. admire that. And, and anyone that says they don't is chatting shit. They yeah. admire the work and the time and the effort and the dedication because it is just so hard to achieve because it's going to take yeah, your it's, life. It's completely unrelatable. That's what it is. Yeah. The average person can't relate to, you know, the work that goes into that. And for them, it's like, it's fascinating. You know, mm. it's just like people drawn to like watching car accidents or fail videos. It's like, you know, the things that are like insanely not normal people want to see, you know? Yeah. Okay. Um, so Ian, your prep for the Olympia, you're how many weeks out? 13 this coming weekend. So we started prep just this past week on 14 weeks out. And how is anything different? Are you guys going to do the same kind of the same structure you've kind of been doing all along, like going to New York or anything like that? Or uh, no, any... we know we can be better than New York. I mean, New York, we definitely played the safe side um you know the conservative as well like conservative but not all at the same time because it was the conservative side that we didn't take many risks yeah. uh, but like the not safe side that we didn't take any risks to look better you know so yeah um you know i think like the first you know obviously we're 14 weeks out and i'm already in show condition so we're gonna have to come up a bit you know make sure i'm not eating in a deficit and that you know my energy levels are there and optimal to train and you know get a little weight back on and you know not you know keep myself well fed Mm -hmm. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, obviously then the goal after that is to, you know, push the conditioning a little tighter, um, so that if we don't use diuretics again or anything like that, you know, the conditioning will, will be there 120%, you know, without any of that in, Mm -hmm. um, and then obviously, you know, managing the size and fullness the best we can, you know, I want to 
be bigger and fuller for sure. I know, especially through my chest and stuff, we can still ma- manage the fullness a bit better for the, for the Olympia. So, mm-hmm. you know, so we've changed the training up a bit, you know, getting blood in my chest a little more often. Now I'm hitting it like two and a half, two, two times a week kind of thing. So, um, okay. you know, it's like that in my back. I, just hit a little more often. I, I really admire the, the not, I'll, I'll say this from personal experience, the not using a direct approach because it's not easy to do. Because I, I'll, I'll be honest, I've always pretty much relied on yeah. it. Um, and the one time I didn't use one was in New York and it fucked me. Yeah. And um, I went from being, you know, looking pretty good the week before wherever it was in Spain to like being totally different by not using one. And I know people say that it doesn't make a difference, but it fucking does. It makes so the, mani- the manipulations you guys made, and the reason I'm showing respect is because it's not fucking easy to land that, land that without one because it's almost a fail safe. And like you said, you, there's a risk, but the risk and reward factor is quite high because yeah. it can get you pretty fucking crispy. And to be able to pull off a pro win without a direct, in my, my eyes at least, is actually really impressive. And I know there's some people that have done it or claim to, but from my understanding and my knowledge of other pros, it's very rarely done. So this, you know. this, this is what I'll say. I do, me and John did that for uh, Orlando and Vancouver, both of my pro wins. Yeah. And... I think the reason it works, and Ian, correct me if I'm wrong, but you said this, I think you said this leading up to New York. The reason it worked for us is we didn't change anything. We, yeah. we, we did a very light carb load because I was already kind of full going into the last week. Yeah. So we didn't like deplete and then load real heavy. So yeah. my body didn't retain any water. I was waking up every morning dry already. Yeah. Mm. So we just kind of pulled water back a little bit the last couple of days. And because I was waking up dry, I didn't hold anything the day of. Yeah. See, for me, I didn't even pull back any water. We kept it high because for me, it was weird. Like, I don't know what exactly was going on, but it makes sense when you look back to Tampa and why even just a little bit of lowering and even just a quarter diazide, I went into like such a yeah. hole like that. Yeah. Because this show, even with full water, full food, food, full sodium in, my weight was like, I could barely keep my weight. You still weren't really, really blasted full, no. Yeah. No, I was like, I was yeah. excreting more than I was like, it was like I had taken the diuretic. Like yeah. I was peeing yeah. nonstop. It's like, I'd literally go piss. Like most going to test this. I take a piss and then I'd like go sit down to eat. And I'm like, fuck, I have to piss again, you know? Yeah. 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 And it, it wasn't like little trickles. It was like coming off. And like, I'd wake up at, you know, 252 and I'd eat four meals and drink nine liters of water. And I'd still be 251. You know? Ian, Ian, let me ask you though, was that, was that, was it, was, was uh, Patrick doing any sodium manipulation to make that happen? Or was it just your body? Yeah. So we, well, the sodium, we kept just like cranked high. We didn't never lowered it whatsoever. Okay. Okay. So it was like, it was, you know, salting the shit out of all my meals, water high right through. Yeah. So that's the, also, go ahead, James. I was to say that's also when I notice things go wrong is when people pull sodium. Oh yeah, for me at least. Yeah, yeah. I, I've I've looked great, pull sodium, and I then I look awful. Yeah. Um, and then when I reintroduce it, I'm fine. It's like why the fuck did I even pull it? Yeah. But James, <laughs> James, let me ask you this because you said that the time that you didn't didn't use a diuretic, you were a little smoother. But did you do a, like a, a traditional carb load? Because I like I said, I think that's the reason no. why it works. No, I didn't. I, I was very um, you just kept everything steady? I was, I was, I was very gentle. And uh, I was actually pretty dry, like, the day before. Yeah. But I feel like, this is what I'm, my personal opinion, is that a direct is a little bit of a fail safe against cortisol. Okay. So if cortisol is something that affects you, if you are someone who does stress or uh, and your body responds in a way where it starts to retain, then a diuretic is definitely a surefire way to at least combat that to a certain extent. And I think I got pretty stressed in New York because it was the first time doing it and it was a big show. And I would normally would rely, I would rely on a direct to kind of combat that. Cause I, even though I would be stressed, I know that the direct would be doing what it's doing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and it showed, I had a, I had a, a film of water all over me. I wasn't not lean, but I was certainly holding sub Q water that wouldn't have been there if I had done even. This, this is when you bust out the cytodrin. Just <laughs> shut your quarters all down to none. You'll, oh, sleep, you'll sleep all day any- nonstop and you won't even know you competed. Does anybody even get cytodrin anymore? I haven't seen cytodrin in like 10 years. I've used it twice, two shows. Really? Yeah, I used it um, with De- Dennis in my uh, pro debut with you in Orlando. Yeah. And I mostly will say this too. I literally, we landed on like Tuesday. I slept for five days straight. I couldn't even stay awake. It's like we get in the car. The, the second worst. I sit down, I was just like. I know. You know, I know. I was backstage like yawning. You could barely keep my eyes open. I mean, you're, court, you're so like just shut down. I couldn't even do it. And then I, I used remember. it for Toronto Pro 2016 as well, I think. But well, it just makes it kind of a weird look. Yeah. Was it a good thing or a bad thing? 
That's a good thing. I, I, in Orlando, it was great. I mean, I was like yeah. just relaxed, you know, to yeah. shit. I was so calm. I wasn't thinking about the show at all. It was great. But um, yeah, no, it, it I, didn't. I definitely don't think it made me better. I had a good experience with it, but like, it's hard to, you know, when someone says like, if someone says to me, Hey man, does Cytadrin get you more shredded or did it help you? It's like, it's hard to tell because yeah. there's so much stuff going into a prep and you're working with a certain coach and you're working on a certain diet. And I'm like, maybe I'd have been shredded anyway. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's hard to say, like, like when I was with Chad, Chad would pull me down so hard with my diet that like, I don't think I needed the Cytadrin. I probably would have been shredded regardless. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's hard to tell like how amazing it is. Yeah. And as far, as far as it, like, you know, the main purpose I know that people take is to block cortisol and retain, help you retain muscle mass. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't know how much muscle you're going to lose anyway, if you're taking a bunch of anabolics. Yeah, so it's exactly. kind of like, I don't know. It's a little bit overkill, I think. Yeah. Um, James, what are you doing now? You're three weeks out almost. Yeah. Fuck me. Fucking it's coming around. I'm, I'm getting, bit, bit, I'm feeling the pinch now. I have to say. I was just going to um, ask you that. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm used to it. It's like, I think I've done about 23 shows now. So, you know, it is what it is. Uh, I'm excited. I'm starting to get excited. And, uh, I'm, Yannick has obviously moved to Norway for a year. All right. So, I feel like she's gone. Uh, yeah. 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 So I've got a house to myself, which, <laughs> surprisingly is really nice <laughs> i was gonna say that i was gonna say it's probably a good thing at this point i'm fucking i am fucking chilled i'm like yeah. wow like i got a whole house to myself and uh you know i love her dearly she's the best person on the planet but it couldn't have come at a more appropriate time yeah, yeah. i was just gonna say you, so, have to, like, uh, you don't have to you don't have to entertain anybody you don't have to like worry yeah. about like her feelings you're just like yeah, there's, no being in, there's no both being in the kitchen at the same time like get the fuck out of the kitchen there's none of that <laughs> like it's it's really really cool and you know i can i can facetime her and whatnot and then once the show's done i can go over to norway once you know covid is kind of well we'll see i have to quarantine when i go over there but i can go and see her after the show and stuff anyway so it's no stress but yeah. it's, it's great because it just means i can just rein it in now and focus on the last few bits yeah so, so you said uh you said it's 23 shows in and you're used to it and all that but i i don't want to add to your I'm not, I'm not used to it really <laughs> i i don't i haven't counted i i don't know i haven't ever i've never counted more than yeah. 30 you think yeah more than 30 i think i think i don't know i'm gonna i'll, I'll count one day and i'll figure it out i don't i don't really know I um I've done, but, I've done 21 22 21 22 i must have be i must be over 30 i, I don't know for sure i have to check but but uh james what i was gonna say is you I probably have never been in this position though, even though you've done 23 shows, I think you have more eyeballs on you now than you have ever had before. Oh, and I'm not, and I'm, yeah, not, I'm not I, trying to, I'm not trying to add to your stress, but. No, 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 I know. I know, I know it. I fucking, I'll do it to myself. It's my fault. Cause yeah. I'm fucking putting it out there. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Um, but you know, the eyeballs, it depends how you perceive it, isn't it? It's all your perception. Um, it's either going to be something that you can use as a positive energy or something that you can feel as a pressure. And I don't really feel pressure because I know I've improved and I think people know I've improved and that's all the fuck I can do. Yeah. Um, whether it gets me what I want is another story, but I'm very happy in the direction I'm going in and I think I'm going to get where I'm trying to go. Uh, it just depends when. So I don't know. I'm just trying to enjoy the bodybuilding for what it is and realize that it's not an instantaneous thing and, go back to how it used to feel you know it takes time when i was younger and i was like, i want to be british champion i knew it wasn't going to come that year and I, it didn't stop me and that's kind of my mindset now just like keep plodding away and just enjoy it and you're very fortunate that along the way right now you're a good contract with a good company you've got good people around you you get to do fucking podcasts with good friends like you've got, what the fuck am i going to moan about come on yeah yeah <laughs> so, well no it's a, kind of, yeah. it's a it's a good outlook i remember there was a, a arnold classic i think 2014 yeah. And I, I missed the mark again because I always fucked up my Arnold preps because it was always a nerve wracking experience for me. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I, um, I remember, I think Cedric did poorly that year as well because they were expecting Cedric to win like they do every year. And I think Cedric maybe came in a little off or something like that. But I remember Johnny Jackson turning to both of us and saying, it doesn't matter. Like it matters. You want to win. But I think his, his, I don't remember exactly what he said. I'm going to paraphrase, but he said yeah. something along the lines of this is your job and this is what you're going to do and you're going to keep doing it. And it doesn't matter if you take 10th or you take third, you're going to come back and do it. You're going to come back and do it next year. And every year you're just going to try and get better. So don't let this one, it was kind of like, I guess what he was trying to say overall was don't let this one thing like 
Dom- sit, dominate sit. your your manner, your well being. Yeah, yeah. That's something I've really struggled with is like the immediacy of feeling that like I have to be doing things now. Like with this year, I'm like, if I don't qualify for the Olympia this year, like I completely fucking failed. You know, like that's a mindset that's taken a lot for me to to try yeah. and get out of. You know, it's like because yeah, I yeah. got there in 2018. So yeah. It's like if I don't get there in 2019, 2020, I'm regressing. Yeah. You know, if I was placing second in shows and winning shows in 2018, why well, should be winning shows two years later? Because I've improved. So, you know, yeah. I had that like mindset of like, it has to be now, which I, like James said, is, is me and, you know, you can control what you can show that I'm improving. So it's like, what the fuck does it matter? Yeah. You know, it's something that I've definitely struggled with for sure. Well, yeah, I think yeah, it's, it's not easy. It's the, 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 the psychological aspect is, is the hardest thing to get a rein on and get a grasp of. Yeah. Uh, as a professional bodybuilder, I'd say. Well, I think it's just, it's normal for us, right? Because it's common progression. It's like that in the gym and it's like that in our career. Like when you go in, when you go in the gym and you're getting better every week, you want to bench more or you want to put an inch on your arms or whatever it is, whatever the measuring stick is, right? And I think yeah. it's, a, I think it's the same measuring stick that we use for our careers. Like if you placed, you know, six at the Arnold last year, then you want to place fifth at the Arnold the next year or fourth the year after that. Yeah. Like you don't ever want to go backwards, even though it doesn't, it doesn't always work like that because preps are different. Uh, people that show up are different. Everything is different. It's not always the same, but I think in our minds, we always want to step up one notch. Yeah. You do. But there's also this trying to accept the other things as well. Cause bodybuilding isn't just the stage anymore. There's contracts, you know, there's uh, there's other opportunities as well, which coincide with the progression as a bodybuilder. And if I look a year ago and I look before I was with Redcon and I look at all the possibilities and opportunities I've had since that, even if I wasn't on stage this year, if I look at the growth of that, that's a win as well. So I'm just trying to like take into account those kind of victories as well. Yeah. Um, because their opportunities that weren't present last year and they've come from the hard work prior to this moment. It may not be the stage, but it's still part of what this is. It's still it's an- career. Yeah, yeah so it's enough to keep you thinking I'm going in the right direction. But you know what? That's a good point you bring up. And I, I want to ask you this, Ian, because that kind of puts, I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit because if I, if I'm saying this correctly, Ian, I think you are more of a stage bodybuilder. Like your, your objective, like, okay, for example, what I mean by that is like my objective ever since I started was I want to be good on the stage, but I also want to have merchandise and I also want to have like this thing. And I also want to put up videos. And there was yeah. always like a focus on other things too. Yeah. That's never been the case for me. For you, you're like, you're, you're like a central focus is I want to be good on stage. You don't have all these other things going on. Yeah. So I think it's harder for, so James, what you're saying is I think it's harder for, it's easier for you to, to pull successes from your year because you have other stuff that you're focused on that you can draw success from. Oh yeah. Whereas Ian is. But, like, will, but, will, but even with Ian, Ian's, Ian's, I don't, I don't know your, you know, financial situation with your contract or anything like that, but you have a, I know you have a company that you're with. And that, that, I always know that if you do well in bodybuilding and as long as you, you're not a fucking arsehole and you do show some of what you do and you at least make some effort, those things fall into place. So I don't know, like you can still, I feel like you can still be like Ian, very driven on the shows and still benefit, but oh, no, you no. just got to make sure you're out there. I know what you mean, but yeah. like, cause my goal, believe me, my goal, my goal is still like, under, I, I think stage every day. I don't. No, 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 no. I, I understand that. I'm not trying um, to, I'm not trying to diminish. I'm not trying no, to. No, 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 no. I don't. Yeah, but yeah. there is people out there. There is people out there and they're, yeah. they're entirely right to feel that way. They yeah. want to, they want to use their platform. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm not really a platform guy, but I like what you said there about merchandise and all that stuff. Cause that just shows another aspect to what we do as well, that you can, you know, you can make an actual living out of this. I guess what I'm trying to say is this, and I'm not talking about it on a financial level. I'm talking about it on a, on a measuring your own success. So at the end of the yeah. year, like, like, let's say you take at the end, at the end of every year, you take stock of what you did that year. Right. So at the end of 2020, I can look back and go, let's say I did like three shows. Right. I can be like, okay, well I placed shit in all three shows, but my YouTube channel took off. My merchandise sales took off and I've gained successes in all these other areas. So oh, yeah, I, f- yeah, yeah. I feel like you can, at the end of the year, you can look and go, okay, it, it evens out. Like I did some stuff good and I did some stuff shit. Yeah. So I think that's all I meant is like. Yeah, no, no, totally. So I think what basically what I'm trying to say is Ian puts more stress on himself yeah. because there's one avenue that he's trying to dominate. Yeah. So it's like the reward is, the reward is greater. 
but the defeat is also worse. Yeah, so would you say, Ian, so Ian if, if you that example of what Flo just said there, let's say your YouTube blew up, think, but your shows didn't go well, that that would be your main concern, wouldn't it? Your your main concern would be the fucking shows. Well, yeah, because that would that's still who I am, like yeah. right, it's still yeah. who I am and what my focus is, and you know, like even if I started doing a YouTube or started doing a clothing line, those things would still be there. But like, yeah. I'm, I'm still I am who I am, you know. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. That, that's still going to yeah. be like, you know, I have this this nature of competitiveness and also, you know, pressure I put on myself. That's always going to be there, you know. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Okay. Um, let's get to some questions. We have, uh, I don't know how many questions we have. I haven't been on my phone because I've been training. Uh, 218. 245. Let's try and get 10 of them. Uh, would you ever consider doing another calorie challenge or the 20 K make you, make you fear for your life? Oh, that's the 20,000 calorie challenge I did. And I do want to do it again. Have you guys ever done anything like that? Can we do it together? The three of us. Yeah. I would, I would 100 percent do it. You guys wouldn't fucking do I'll it. Try. I'm not a big. I need to fast for a bit. Like I'm, I'm one of those eaters. It's weird. Like I can eat in a day a ton of calories, but in one sitting, I can't necessarily eat that much. Like Melissa could easily out eat me in one sitting. Yeah. But like today, like if she was to eat two of my meals, then she'd be full for the day. You know. Yeah. Or like I can eat a humongous meal, then I'm hungry in 20 minutes. Yeah, but, but you like, don't have to do it in one sitting. I did the 20,000 calorie challenge. It's like from the time you wake up till oh, the time you go to bed. That. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then I could do that. Oh, yeah. guys, guys, that's our, that's our, that's it. That's, <laughs> we've set up. So as soon as COVID is allowing us to travel and I come see you boys, can we do that? Oh, we got to do yeah. it together. I thought we were going to just yeah. film it and like put it whole like, whole day, all three of us, just fucking <laughs> slamming food down, please. <laughs> I love it. I would, I would. Well, we're already in Canada, so you just have to fly your ass over here, and we can fucking. Okay, as soon as I can get, as soon as I can get to Canada, it's on. All right. Awesome. All right. I, look I definitely want to try. I, I definitely want to try it again because I, de- I made a big, big mistake the first time. I've never done one of these. So I will, I will say one thing. I know I did wrong was I should have stuck to restaurant food because restaurant food is way higher in calories. Yeah. After I did like a bunch of restaurant food in the morning for breakfast, I knocked out like four or five thousand calories. Yeah, and then, yeah, and then after that, I did this big, huge bowl of of pasta and meat sauce yeah. that I made at home, and it just yeah. crushed my whole day. Yeah. It just ruined everything. So, all right. Anyway, okay. I just uh, add one last thing to that, just before we move on. Yeah. If if we if we do like a Canadian version, can I get you boys over at some point so we do like a British feed up where yeah. you have like fried fried breakfast and all that shit? I always Stop like your. Tea. I always, you know, when I see your breakfast, I'm always like really in, intrigued. Yeah. With, with the beans and the eggs and the fucking, I'm like, that's it looks good. It, exactly. So if we do one your side, we'll do one my side and I'll take you to a few spots. But I don't, you know what? I don't know. What's that pie you guys eat? Uh, it's like the black pie. Oh, black pudding. Black pudding. What the fuck? What the fuck is that? It's just pig's blood. Yeah, it's pig. Come on. What is it? Seriously. It's, it's blood. pig's blood. It's just blood cooked. Yeah. Oh, it's disgusting, dude. It's gross. Tastes all right. Tastes all right. <laughs> do you eat it all the time or no? No, nah, not really. To be fair, but it's not in all the. I go to like a little bit like more posh calves. They don't really have it, but okay. the, the the real rough, the real rough calves have it. Okay. Oh, before we move on, since we're talking about different places in the world, I think some people are mad at me because I did Samson's podcast and we talked about. He was telling me at the gyms in South Korea, they make you take your shoes off to go into the locker room. They do. They do. In you Japan guys, as well. Okay. Don't you think that? I think that's gross. And, so, and I got a couple of people in the comment section got mad at me because I said that was gross. And I'm like, I don't want to walk through a disgusting locker room that people have been showering and it's all wet and gross. I'm in my socks and I got to walk through the locker room and then I got to like go put my shoes back on and my socks are wet now. Like that's how, well, you, get, that's how you get athlete's foot. Like, it's, it's true. I, I've experienced it when I was in Japan. Okay. And? I know I always bring up Japan. I had to do the same thing when I went into a certain person's gym. And I respected it because it's their rules. No, no, no. But, you, res- yeah. you respect it, but don't you think it's a little oh, strange? Um, it's like being at swimming baths. Like I don't know. It's a bit like being at like a, you know, like when you go swimming in a. Yeah. Uh, this is a very traditional thing in some of these countries, though, isn't it? It is. Like, it is. You know, it is. And that's like, why I mean, places go in, you take your shoes off. It's like a very traditional. No, no, no. But know. one second. Like, so I think there's a difference. Like, like somebody said, like, oh, don't you, you don't take your shoes off in your house? That's gross. And I'm like, wait a minute. I take my shoes off in my house. Yeah, of course. And if there was like a, if I went to like a Japanese restaurant or something and they said, you know, you got to take your shoes off before you sit down, that would yeah. be fine too. I feel like yeah, a locker still, a locker room is like a bacteria central. Like It is, but it's still that cultural thing. It carries over. Um, like the, the, the strictness on culture, it carries into everything. 
Okay, but so wait a minute. I'm not, I'm not there's saying... No, there's no exceptions even in a gym. Okay, but I'm saying. I know, but let's take culture out of it for one second. I'm just saying hygienically. <laughs> I'm just saying oh, hygienically. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't make sense, right? Like, am I no, crazy? You gets, you maybe offer some um, sandals or some slippers or something. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's how it is at most locker rooms. Like, if I go to the gym right now in a locker room, usually the guys that are showering have, like, a pair of sandals on or something, and they go shower, and they come back and change. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I don't, so I'm, say, I don't want to say to I don't want to offend anybody. So like, <laughs> no, no, I'm not. Look, I'm not saying to offend anybody. Like you no, guys, I, know, I know you're not. I know you're not. You, like you said on the last one, people were having to go. <laughs> so look, like, man, what? every every culture has things that people are thinking. Like I'm sure there's a lot of stuff in Middle Eastern culture that's weird. Like we like we use bidets, right? People are think people think it's weird that like we wash our ass after we take a dump. So I don't know. I, I, love I, bidet. I don't think it's weird. I think that's actually cleaner. But I mean, fuck, people here think it's weird. Mate, so bidets are amazing. Uh, right? Isn't it make more sense? Great. Yeah. Clean, <laughs> clean shithole. Why not? Anyway, okay. We'll move, we'll move on. Um, are all the veins in Nick Walker's legs a good thing, specifically below his knees? Well, those are varicose veins, right? Yeah, varicose. They, they could be removed. Yeah, they're the ones, he's got too many to get removed, but they're the yeah. ones that people actually often have removed. Yeah. So is that dangerous? I don't know. They can cause complications, can't they? I, I, I don't my, know. My, my, my mother had some removed when she was younger, so. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So maybe. Um, if going from blast to cruise, but continuing a bulk, should you lower calories slightly to compensate for the less protein absorption or keep calories and macros the same? Ian's a coach. Ask him. Ian, let me ask you this question before we move on, <laughs> before, before you answer this. Is it true that you're going to absorb less protein if you're on less gear? I don't necessarily think so. I don't think so either. No. I, I, and, and to answer the question, I mean, if you're still trying to bulk, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily, I would keep the food the same. And if your body composition starts to go awry, then I would adjust the calories accordingly. But I wouldn't just make that as like a cut and dry. It's like, oh, I you down to cruise now instead of blasting. Let's just cut the calories down. So you know, yeah. I'm not absorbing as much. I would leave it. And then, you know, if you start to notice, hey, I'm gaining a little more body fat because I don't have any, as much, you know, anabolics in. Okay, let's lower the carbs a bit, lower the fats a bit. I would try and keep your protein as a constant. Um, but I, you know, I would definitely, if you're getting fatter, I would back down on the calories, but I wouldn't just do that willy nilly without seeing, maybe mm. you're going to keep improving. You know, it's why would you change that without knowing, you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, you, 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 you might, you might be an exception. You might be an exception that does that lowers your gear and actually starts to improve even more for a while. For sure. Right. It. What I always like to do is like a slingshot effect. Like when I went off, I would try and keep my food high I always do. And, and keep my weight the same. That way. When I went back on, like if I was, let's say I was 250 when I went off, mm. usually when you go off, you know, you're going to lose 10 pounds of water or whatever it is. Right. Sure. I would try and stay at 250. Yeah. That way, when I went back on, I would blast past that pet plateau of 250 and I would end up at 260. Yeah. So like yeah. the last thing I want to do is ebb and flow with my, like, I want my weight to stay there. Even if I get a little chubbier, like I don't, yeah. I didn't well, care. That's the thing he said. I mean, the, the, the key word was there. He said he was trying to bulk. You yeah. Know, if he said, he, if you're trying to grow, why would you? intentionally take away from that without yeah. necessarily needing to, you know? Yeah. yeah. And also like, if you do just willy nilly the lower calories, you're going to notice a performance drop and the performance is ultimately what's going to allow you to continue Maintain to push the muscle. muscle. Yeah. 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 Um, is it okay to sleep six hours a night and two hours during the day instead of having to sleep all at night? That's what I've done for the majority of my life. So I, I'm doing okay. So I say so, yes. <laughs> Dude, I've been sleeping four hours a night and it's like in yeah. half hour blocks for the last like two weeks. Yeah. You're not Is that because of your hungry or because you're pissing or your mind's racing? You know, I, I, ever since I did the podcast with Dr. Dean, and if you haven't seen it, check it out. He's very, very smart. He was talking about how trend increases um, dopamine and dopamine levels when they get too high because dopamine causes focus. Oh, that's so, he goes, fucking... so he goes that's why when you take trend it's hard to sleep because i notice when i'm not when i'm not on trend i can my sleep yeah. is like, great i pass out i sleep all through the night and as soon as i get on trend it fucks my sleep see I, I i sleep fine on trend with the exception of that my night sweats are like so outrageous that i'll wake up with like crazy sweats but if i wasn't sweating i'm not waking up you know okay okay yes it's the sweat that wakes you up not actually the yeah because uh, i'll wake feeling. up with I crank my AC, so then I sweat, and then the sweat goes like cold, and then I wake up. I'm like, "Oh my fucking god, I'm about to die of hypothermia," you know. And then you cool down, yeah. you know, you settle down. Then you're like, "Okay, I'm fine," you know. So but I, I, my I've sleep noticed, is- I've okay. noticed the last few weeks that it's really kicked in that sweat. Yeah, me too. Really kicked in, and I'm I- the same. I'm like blocks of half an hour, 
and then waking up looking at the clock like how long have i been asleep and it's like literally fucking 30 minutes yeah, yeah. that's what i but, noticed too like dude i we i texted you last night in the middle of the night yeah it's yeah, four yeah, thirty yeah, or some yeah. shit and, and, you, and yeah, you we were, were just chatting yeah and i'm like <laughs> but i wake up at like i'll wake up at like three in the morning right and I'll think to myself, and I feel refreshed. And I'm like, oh, it must be morning time. Okay, cool. I can get up and do my cardio. And I'll okay, look at my, so. I'll look at my phone. It's three in the morning. I'm like, fuck. Yeah. So then I'm like, I got to try and force myself to get back to sleep. And it's just, yeah. Did, did you gentlemen ever do the prep? Like you must have, because you've done enough shows. The prep where you do just get up and do it. Yeah. Because I have. Yeah. yeah. You know, like the 3 a.m. Fuck it. I've got keys to the gym. I'll just go and start my day. Yeah. I've done that. I've, How I've did you find that? I've been up and, you know, played video games or whatever, but. Um, yeah, that's been a long time. Like I, I sleep so well. Like I've, I've always been such a good sleeper. Like that's I can literally just close my eyes and sleep for four hours anywhere at any time, you know? Wow. Brilliant, mate. Yeah. No, for me, James, like, I have a thing I, with travel. there, there's been times like if I got up at four in the morning, right. And I'm like, and like you said, like, I'm like, fuck it. I'm just going to get up. I always try and stretch it. Cause I don't want to eat my breakfast too soon. Yeah. So I'll stay, yeah. I'll get up at four and I'll like, I'll just fuck around. I'll work on clients programs when I was coaching or like mm. whatever it is, I'll do it for a couple hours and then I'll go. But there is yeah. times where I get up at like four in the morning. I'm like, you know what? I'm not even going to try and force this shit anymore. I'm just going to get up. Yeah. Last year, last year when I was prepping with Chris, cause it's such a crash diet. My weight came down so quick from Romania. I remember like going to the gym at like 2 a.m. and thinking, fuck it. This is train. <laughs> my, my body clock was just all over the gas. So I was just like, yeah. fuck it. Yeah, and this is what I was gonna say here. Question for you guys: Do you guys notice that I? This is the thing with me, and I I know it's not for a lot of people. When I travel, like in airports or on planes, I cannot, st- I could not stay awake on a plane or sitting in an airport to save my life. For some reason, they make me sleep. Like I get on a plane, and I could be so energetic getting on the plane. The second I get on it, I fall asleep, and I can't, I cannot. Whatever I'm doing, I try and watch a movie. I try and play a game on my phone. I try to do anything. I'm asleep within 20 seconds. That's amazing. Why would you want to stay on a plane anyway? That's great. No. I'm, I'm saying it, it is great, but is it, it like it's like I couldn't even stay awake if I tried. You know? For me, for me, what I've noticed in the last like few years, for some reason, I always pass out when the plane is getting ready to take off, and then I wake up like when we've reached altitude. Oh, same yeah. fuck's sake! I hate and then that. I and then I can't go back to sleep. I'm it's like, really, it's I'm really right. anticlimactic, isn't it? Because you're like, <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pass some time, and all you, all you've literally done is reached altitude. Yeah, yeah. And, and then you hear them go off, and they're like, okay, we've reached altitude, and you're like, fuck. Uh, and the funny thing about that is, then the seatbelt thing gets blocked. You can't go uh, like this. Well, the seatbelts aren't ready yet because it's not quite altitude. So even if you yeah. do wake up and you need a piss, you're like, I gotta sit down still yeah, for a while. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, no, I can't sleep anywhere, man. Especially like actually sitting in the airport, like waiting to get on the plane. The there's thing. no, there's no fucking way. I'm the same. I sit down in airports. I don't know what it is. And it's just like that, that atmosphere, oh. like the air in there or something. I don't know what it is, but like I get in airports, I get on planes. I, I literally sleep entire trips. Like I, I'll yeah. get from E to B with sleeping the entire time other than like walking to the areas, you know? I, I want wish. some of what, I want some of what you got. I know. <laughs> you know, I, I'm not going to mention the athlete cause I don't know if he wants me to, even though this isn't bad, but he used to mix, uh, there's a product called, I think it's called Somatomax or something like that. Oh, is it like a GH secreted goal or something? Is that what it is? Yeah. And then he used to mix that with Fenibut. Really? Fenibut. Is it yeah. Fenibut or Fenibut? Anyway, he used to mix those two, right? So he's like, and he gave it to me one time because I couldn't sleep on a plane. He's like, here, drink this like when you start boarding. And he goes, I promise you, you won't wake up till the plane lands. And I'm like, there's no fucking way, man. Like, I, I know I can't sleep on a plane. Yeah. Dude, I got on the plane. They start right. taking. They start to fucking take off. I'm like out cold. I wake yeah, up. Nice. We're fucking late. They're taxiing the runway. They're like, I slept the whole fucking. But I was a little groggy when I got up. But I was like, yeah. I don't remember anything. Six hours. I was out cold. Yeah. Best sleep of my I, life. That's yeah. great. Man. Yeah, Fenya butt and is it Somatomax? Is that what it's called? Yeah, it's like yes. That's what you say. Yeah. Yeah. Are they legal? Are both legal? Fenya butt is. I don't think Fenibut's legal in Canada. It's not it, Canada. Depends on, yeah. uh, it depends on the country. Yeah. It's funny, though, because in like, Canada, you can get ephedrine. Yeah, only yeah. in 8 milligrams, though. Yeah, yeah, 8, eight milligrams, 8 CL on it, yeah. yeah. Um, is it okay or healthy to eat whole eggs rather than egg whites? Will it negatively impact my bloods? Uh, no. Let's just skip over it. Eat, eat whole eggs are better than anything. Whole eggs are better. Uh, yeah. um, oh, look at this. Which race has the best bodybuilders? Muslim? <laughs> Wait a minute, let me read that. Muslim, first of all, first of all, he says Muslim. Muslim, Muslim it's, not not a, it's not a race. <laughs> I love it. Love it. Okay, Muslim, Asian, or white British people? 
He left out. He left out black. He he left out so like many he... people left out there. <laughs> so many. All right. Let's just. I don't know. Are we gonna let's skip the race? I, yeah, I, I think Arab Arab countries are. I think have the overall the best bodybuilders. I don't think we do. I think we just have the best drugs. You think so? I don't know. It seems like the countries. Okay, let's just be but real. Obviously, for, when it comes to like shape, genetics, and stuff, yeah, the black guys you kill everybody. But let's I mean, just it, let's just be real for a second. The it seems like the countries with the easiest drug laws are the guys are the ones that are coming out with the best bodybuilders recently i don't know but the u.s is still like that's the shittiest drug laws for steroids and all the i mean that's obviously powered by yeah. numbers, but i mean you know they're the worst for drugs there i mean that's like a schedule one like go to prison for life kind of shit in the u.s where yeah, canada yeah. obviously it's a lot looser i mean and the arab speaking countries and stuff but um okay wait a minute yeah, let me let yeah, me, I, mean, let I, me... I, think, I think every every kind of sect has like things like, I feel like white guys can get the biggest you know the bi white guys are always the biggest guys you know you don't ever see you know guys like obviously ronnie's huge but i mean if you take it as a whole i think white guys get the biggest i think black guys have the nicest shapes i think arabs can get crazy hard and dry i think separation like, yeah separation there's kind of like a little bit different for everything you know what i want to i want to rephrase my answer because i actually maybe don't think it's the drugs i think it's <laughs> the, the culture of the country because if you think I of, agree with that, if you think of the Arab, if you think of the arabs and maybe because i'm also thinking of latinos yeah um it seems like they immerse themselves in absolutely. the in the gym culture more so than we do in north america i agree and so like you get bigger groups of guys that are like all trying to get huge yeah, yeah. and i think it was like that in north america like maybe a decade ago or more yeah maybe two three decades ago or is now it's like not as much yeah so i think like now I think it's, it's cool to be classic or it's cool to be men's physique. Whereas like in some of those countries, like those Arab countries, it's still cool to be fucking humongous. And like, and ripped and cr yeah, look yeah, free. yeah, I agree. Um, I mean, like you see started to go back on this. No, that's no, okay. Stuff like, I mean, to show the cultural difference. I mean, like when Hadi, after he came third at the Olympia, did you ever oh, see parade, parade down the yeah, streets? Yeah. yeah. Isn't that amazing? He was like, he was right. like in the biggest celebrity there. Like, hoisted up on chairs in the airport 20,000 yeah. people yeah. I mean I, Chris won the Olympia we came home it was like it was the fucking regular Tuesday like everything else yeah, yeah. can you imagine yeah. though how much better would our bodybuilding culture be like I don't I don't want to say that we do it for people but everybody does everybody likes that shit a little bit imagine yeah. you imagine Ian you won the New York Pro and you came back to Ottawa there's like people waiting at the airport for you yeah like, yeah yeah, yeah. Like, we get <laughs> Like like, the man, the man, the man like is waiting. I, I'm just yeah, saying, like, a, give me a medal and shake my hand, you know. I just think, I think there would be a lot more bodybuilders if we received a reception the way Hottie received his reception when he got oh, home. You know what I mean? Like, without a doubt, without yeah. a doubt. Yeah, yeah, that'd yeah. be amazing. I'd, I'd like, I'd, again, like you say, it's not for that, but that would be really cool. <laughs> that would yeah. be cool. Yeah. I'd love like that. Uh, what food do you crave the most post show? I, you know, I never used to be able to answer this question. I think I've decided I'm a, just a pizza guy. I fucking love pizza. Yeah. I know it's really plain. It's like a plain answer. It's simple. But every time I cheat, I always go back to pizza. This is the most, I have the most pretentious answer to this that people are going to think I'm like some fucking yummy. Well, let me guess. It's like lobster or something. No, I, I like after shows, I love like having like a good like charcuterie board, like a cheese and meat, like bread board. Like a really, yeah. like that's like that, that just does it for me, you know, like some good yeah. prosciutto on there, some nice, like good, strong, sharp cheeses, you know, maybe a couple olives and some, you know, different pickled things and stuff. That's my fucking, you know, I what? Get out. I get that. I'm right in, I'm right in line with you. I just would have never called it that. Yeah, because I just go to the grocery store and I grab like a brick of cheese and like some deli meat and I just well, I, I won't make it myself. Oh, it's got to be cut up and like ready for you. Yeah, like all yeah. like a fancy restaurant, you know, like the, we have a place in Ottawa here called like Fratelli or there's where's the other one? The good one we got from uh, Cheshire Cat has one, right? Yeah. Yeah. So there's a couple of places around here that have like really good ones, you know. Yeah. So you'll just get like you know takeout or whatever, or go in there. Yeah, yeah. That's my fucking. Or Doritos. Right. That's like my dirty side. Yeah. Or, du or Doritos. <laughs> it's like yeah. super, super high class. <laughs> or Doritos. <laughs> I, I, personally, me, I just want some peanut butter on toast. Really? No. Yeah, just, but we, I need proper butter before I put the peanut butter on as well. So there's a bit and more. And like not natural peanut butter? You're oh, wait with... a minute. You're, you're one of those oh, guys. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. Shit peanut butter. It's probably really okay. sugary okay. and shit. Yeah. Wait a minute. You're one of those guys you put butter on before you put the peanut butter on? Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. so much better, man. I don't think you I've ever butter your toast. Always. I don't think I've ever had that. It's even with jam, even that. with jam, butter your toast and then put jam yeah, on. Often. I've had, I've had, I've had, I've had butter and jam. I've never had butter. butter. What's that? 
And how much better was it with the jam? It was. It was. It was awesome. It was okay, awesome. Well, it's equally as good with the with the jam and peanut. Yeah. yeah, but I think the peanut butter is already like buttery. So I'm like, it's not it buttery doesn't... enough. It's not buttery. <laughs> <laughs> it's still it's still kind of a dry. Like if you take a mouthful of peanut butter, it still makes you go like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Tippy. If you put a thing of butter in your mouth, you're not going. <laughs> yeah. It's smoother. It like smooths out the bread and everything. Kind of like you know. Ah, moves that's... Yeah. Okay, it wait a minute. Really I, have, I have a question for James though because. Are you saying that right now because you're dieting and peanut butter is like life when you're dieting? Or are you yeah, saying no, that? No, 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 no. Like, I would actually rather have butter on toast than peanut butter on toast. Like butter okay. and toast. No, no, it's but that's fat. not the question. Like you're like post show. Is that what you, you want peanut butter? You want, you want toast and butter? I just want some toast. Yeah, I just want toast. Yeah, he's a simple man. He's I'm a, a very man. simple man. And I don't mind whether it's toast with bar, toast with marmite, toast with jam, like just toast. All right. It's just great. I know what you mean, though. It's, 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 the, it's, the, it's the bread. I get in that mindset, too. That you just want, like, a big... Yeah, and it's got, it's got to be like a tiger loaf, like a really nice, crusty, you know, yeah. hard edge. Yeah. And you've got to chop it yourself so it's fresh, so it's all, you know... Dude, I'm so hungry right now. You're fucking killing me. Okay. <laughs> Good. Good. Um, I was using sauce. I'm fine. Having trouble growing my legs. I eat enough protein. Could maybe use some more carbs. I walk 9 to 11 miles a day for work. Whoa! I, I do legs twice a week. What's the deal? Well, you do too much shit. You're doing too much legs. You're walking too much and you're probably not eating enough. Jesus, that's the trifecta right there. <laughs> yeah. You're doing everything wrong. Yeah. <laughs> and he might, he might, might, might be training like an absolute faggot. Like, yeah. you, you, can't you, say you, train, you train them twice a week. We can say faggot in England. It just means you're being a bitch. You can't say that here. <laughs> in, in, in England, this just so gonna, everyone knows. This so is going to get taken off on YouTube all, now. In England, all, you know, all it means is you're just being a, a wince, a bitch. Okay, yeah. so yeah. that's the cot the uh, I don't know what dem what's the word anyway, that's what that is, but yeah, right. you're not you're not trying hard enough, you're you're probably you're doing too much walking and you're not training your leg, yeah. It's yeah, buy, a, buy a fucking segue, dude. What are you walking so much for? Like, get on this yeah. segue, like you know, mall cop, and just save oh. save your energy, man. Come on, yeah. well, you don't need, yeah, I mean, there's too much walking and then legs twice a week. Why are you doing them twice a week if you're, I mean, but yeah, you can do all that, but if you're gonna walk that much and do that much training, you better be eating like a fucking racehorse, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me about it. Um, serious question, maybe common sense to people in our industry, but how do pros eat four to six thousand calories and still maintain tight midsections? And I don't mean guts. I mean, actually not having love handles or fat hanging out the sides. I know the fat distribution is genetic, but I've seen it a lot. But can I, can I please answer this real quick? And then you yeah, guys can, can. This, try, this, this drives me, this drives me crazy. Cause I see this all the time. I see this question constantly. Yeah. How do pros eat 5,000 calories and stay lean? The answer, the answer, the answer is it's because the pros you're seeing have been doing it for a decade or more. Mm. And, and we didn't always eat 5,000 calories and stay lean. When I started, I would eat 5,000 calories and I was a fat fuck in the off season. Yeah. yeah. And we built, once you build enough muscle, you can yeah. eat 5,000 calories and your body will use it. It's yeah. like, I, I just, I, I feel like people see us and we post pictures and they forget that there was like a beginning. Yeah. Where well, like. Cal calories are relative. Like they're saying four to 6,000 calories, but like, Four to 6,000 calories for you might be a lot of food, but to us, it's not necessarily. My body can barely hold weight with 4,000 calories. So you're That's talking, right. you're so far off homeostasis, you know, you're, you're just, just to even maintain that kind of tissue takes that calories, you know? Yeah. So and, 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 is, yeah, just having, like you said, having that much muscle, you just need that much food, you know? Yeah. So like, you're not going to get fat when your body's just burning through it by just existing, you know? That's yeah. exactly the point is 4,000 calories is relative. 4,000 calories? Sorry, excuse me. 4,000 calories for a 200 pound guy is probably going to be too much. 4,000 calories for 250 pound guy is nothing. No. So when you guys are looking at your favorite pro or whoever it is online, you have to remember that there was a beginning phase where they were growing, where they probably yeah. did get fat. Or if they didn't get fat, they were only eating 3,000 calories or 3,500 calories. And they bumped it up as they grew. As we get bigger, we bump up the calories. It's not the thing that it, it infuriates me too, and I don't really understand. I see it all the time when I do my Q and A's. Is people asking me, like people that are a, a hair the size of me, asking what my macros and what you know oh. my diet for them to follow. I'm like, what the fuck are you gonna do with my diet? Like, mm. you know, you, you, this is completely useless for you. This is like it's the most useless information ever. It's I don't yeah. think it's but wait a minute, I don't think it's useless because I do I do like the whiteboard videos on YouTube and I put my diet up. Yeah, but you'll also do like macro breakdowns and stuff and people can devise from that. Like yeah, that's what yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the, yeah, these guys people are asking me like literal like 
give me your diet because I want to follow it. Yeah, yeah, yeah literally. Yeah, yeah, they yeah, do, yeah. they do. Because I've done it on Q&As. And I, yeah. They're always the ones I don't reply to because I get pissed off like, like you do. It's like they literally want you to write it down so that they can give it a go for a week and, and be like you. And it's not going to happen because it doesn't fucking happen like that. Like you boys have explained. Yeah. You should do it. You should do it. Because do if you get, because, for a week. yeah, because if you, well, seriously, because if you weigh 150 pounds and, and you try Ian's diet or James diet, you're probably not going to get through. Stomach's going to be like, well, you're not going to get through the food. You're going to do it for a day. And then, there's no way. Yeah. You'll do yeah. it for one day and you're going to say, fuck it. I can't do this shit. And yeah. That's it. yeah. So absolutely. Um, if you could make one type of food, zero calories, what would it be? <laughs> well, you, we know yours is pizza already. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> I, and I'd probably honestly take the Doritos because I could just snack on Doritos all the time. Oh, uh, imagine Doritos. zero calorie Doritos. Yeah, you could just wow. snack on chips all day. That'd be fucking awesome. That would be incredible. Yeah. Well, I'm zero calorie toast, obviously. Yeah, we already picked our, <laughs> <laughs> our foods. <laughs> uh, I'm doing my first bodybuilding contest in the summer of 2021. Should I get a local coach now or continue to bulk and wait until about 16 weeks out to hire him? Hey, wait, I want to take this one first. Sure. This annoys me. And I saw this on Geared Up uh in the facebook group the other day and the key word used there is local it's fucking 2020 people like don't limit yourself to whatever fucking schmuck is in your town because he's local yeah none of us really ever work with coaches in our city none of my mm. clients live in the same city as me you hire the coach who's the best for the job not based off your proximity that's yeah. the clear-cut answer find the coach that you think is the absolute best fit for you it doesn't need to be local you don't need them there to fucking hold your dick when you piss you just need them to see photos, videos. I mean, you all have smartphones. We all have 1080p cameras on our phones, you know? We yeah. all can take good videos. Send it to your coach. Do a remote. Find whoever's the best for the job. Don't fucking yeah. get local dinkies, you know? Can I, can I add in a, a very important point to this? And this is, yeah. I think, the, the crux of this question. The, the problem I see with the question is, should I wait till I start dieting? And that's the main mistake guys make. 100%. They'll, they'll come to a coach at like eight weeks out, and they want to look like Ian for their yeah. show. And I'm like, no, no, no. The work is, begins in the off season. So if you're going to get a coach that's actually going to help you, you need them to help you put on muscle too, not just get shredded. Well, and, and you also have to look from the coach's perspective. I mean, we're walking into completely unfamiliar territory eight weeks out. If we at least have some time to make you, you know, do a little bit of off season time or a little time before the show, before you get into prep, we can at least get some what of an understanding for, okay, this guy fucking is super sensitive to these foods or this guy doesn't look good when we do this or, you know, we need to avoid doing this. At least we can have some kind of time to do some reconnaissance before you yeah. hop into prep. You hop into yeah. eight weeks out, you're just like the first four to six weeks, you're just figuring the fucking person out. And at that mm -hmm. point, you might be too late, you know? So you're actually, you're, yeah, you're actually not giving the coach a fucking chance. No, you're not. I don't but take comments for less than 14 weeks ever. But sure. it's not even, honestly, even if he said it's 16 weeks. So even if I could figure out a, a guy's body at 16 weeks, which I have done, like I've gotten guys shredded, Oh, I've done that plenty of times. Yeah. But, the, but the problem is, if you look a certain way at 16 weeks when you come to the coach and you have a certain amount of muscle, That's it. it's probably not going to change very much over the course of the 16 weeks till you get to the show. No. So if you want to look amazing, you should go to a coach when you're fucking six, six months. Yeah, the, the, longer, the longer, the better, to be honest. Like, yeah. if, you, if you can work with them for a year in the off season and then do a prep. Look at this realistically. Like, all of us when we were in our body workers for the majority, we were working with coaches all year. Yeah. You know? Yeah. James and I, you know, we were working with Patrick through an entire off season into yeah. a prep, into multiple shows. I mean, and if I hadn't have done that off season time with Patrick, I mean, like that was a lot of time where we learned a lot and yeah. that carries into prep, you know, you need those times for both. And you know, that's also the time when you're actually improving, you know, yeah. like you said. Bodybuilding, isn't it? You've got to build the yeah. body and you can't do that in a fucking prep. No. Yeah, it always it always stressed me out when someone would come to me and they would expect to look a certain way, but I'm like, you came to me before we had any time to build any muscle. Yeah. yeah. So whatever, if you had no, if you have no back, if you have no legs, if you have no chest, whatever it is you're lagging, that's going to be lagging at, at showtime because you didn't give the coach enough time to help you build it up before yeah. the prep. If, if anything, it's going to look even worse because once you strip a little fat off it and you're flattened out of it, you're going to look. That's right. Like that's right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you're right. That chest will be a really bad chest. You know. Yeah. Yep. Uh, if I. If I gain and then lose a pump during a workout, should I keep training? Uh, well, this is relative to the circumstance because, I mean, if you're two weeks out, you could get a pump in one exercise and then lose it by the second exercise. So you're not just going to stop training by the second exercise. If you're in the off season, well, then you obviously need to figure something out. You're either your sodium, your water intake, your carb intake, something is off. 
Yeah. Um, you shouldn't lose a pump after one or two exercises or three exercises if you're in the off season. Um, but yeah, I mean, no, the answer to that, in my opinion is no. I mean, you can still continue to, you know, break down tissue and, and stuff without getting in crazy pump. I mean, 90% of my workouts throughout the year, I'm not like pumped to the max, you know? Well, I would agree with the first thing you said, which is if you're dieting, I wouldn't stress about it because it could be a, ma- a factor of your calories being low, your carbs being low, all yeah. these other things. But if you're in the off season, then finish your workout and then go home and go back to the drawing board because that's what I said. Yeah. 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 And that's what I'm saying. I agree with Ian hundred percent. You need to, you need to figure out what's wrong because you should be getting pumps in the off season. Absolutely. James. Yeah, there's, there's a sensitivity factor there going out the window, isn't there? So yeah. you're probably blunt. You're probably kind of desensitized and you need to have a little refresh. Probably you know, something's not quite right. You know, something that happens to me in the off season sometimes is I have too much carb saturation and that's yeah, kind of that- like, like if I've been eating high carbs for too long, Exactly. Then, I, then I might start to lose my pumps and then I got to rework things a little and bit. And that's the, that's the whole, you know, insulin sensitivity. Yeah. Yeah. Kind yeah. Of a yeah. You can do that. Yeah. Um, Post show rebound. What kind of approach do you take off season? Is it worth trying to stay lean or push the scale as hard as possible? I, we've, we've all done both. I imagine. I, I have two, <laughs> I have two schools of thought, thoughts on this. Yeah. Like, so as I've, done this podcast and the more people i've talked to the common knowledge that seems to prevail is that your insulin sensitivity is drastically important and if you get too fat you're going to lose insulin sensitivity and your estrogen will be too high and all these other things so i don't think you should get too fat but um i think the magic number that people people always tend to say is like 12 to 14 percent if you're in that range you're okay yeah i think a little bit i like you i think i i personally don't i don't like trying to stay lean off season but I also don't think you should get sloppy fat. If you're 13 or 14%, I think that's good enough. Yeah. I, I, I always talk to Sassan about it because Sass is one of them guys that in the off season is very, very much the opposite. He's like, you know what? I just kind of. He's kinda lean. Or no, and I, no, no. Sass, Sass lets himself yeah. really. Just that's like, how I, I am. I don't, I don't give a shit. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I'm not saying that is the way to go. I'm just saying it comes down to what you can manage and what you can come back from. Like if you need to let yourself down, like mm-hmm. uh, mentally, then that's you, isn't it? And if you're yeah. someone that when prep comes, you switch on and you're crazy good, mm-hmm. fine. I just know for me personally, and probably uh, Ian's very similar, with the structure thing is very important. Yeah. Um, and I like to feel like I am doing this as a job all year round. But well, wait a minute. Me, I, I don't want, but I don't want it to seem like it's not a job for me. So, no, 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 no. But, no, no, I'm but I just want saying. to explain. So I still have the structure. Yeah. Right? Like I still have my six meals a day, I just eat yeah. more. Yeah. Then I, then I, or or I'll vary my foods more than you guys would, right? Like I don't. Yeah. And I think, um, I think the reason for me is, and I think what you said was really important is you have to enjoy what you're doing. Yeah. So if you're if you're the kind of guy like you guys, like I know Ian especially, he like you guys don't like getting fat. You guys don't like going off a plan. You guys like having that strict. But yeah, I don't, I don't mind accumulating some body fat, but I, I, I do like the structure. And I, I think it all comes down to like, look, if I was eating 6,000, 7,000 calories of completely clean food and I was starting to accumulate a little body fat, I probably wouldn't worry about it. But if I knew, if I knew in my like heart of hearts, I'd been like eating McDonald's three, four times a week. And like, you know, I knew that that fat was accumulated through something that wasn't really delivering towards my bodybuilding progress. Yeah. I probably would feel a little shittier about it. And that would be something that I know might be like, hey, this might be a hindrance. You know, and, and, I, and that's where I think I think that's where my mind would be because yeah. I know in the back of my mind I would be like, okay, I can control this. This is a little bit, you know. See, me and me and uh, me and Luke had a long talk about this, and I think me and him were always of the same mindset, which was, yeah, we have our diets, and then anything I eat yeah. above and beyond that is kind of whatever I want to eat. And if, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. if I get fat, I get fat. I know I can get it off come contest time. Yeah, yeah I mean, and, I would never, I would never stress during the off season if like. Yeah. It's a Friday night. Me and Melissa want to go have a meal in the off season. We want to go hit fucking milestones or yeah. boxes or yeah. have a good meal. I mean, I'm not going to sweat that or yeah. you know, she's got to popcorn at the movie theater. I'll take a handful of it, not like shit in my pants, you know, but so uh, I but guess for the most part, I'm hundred percent diligent. Yes. Okay. So, sorry, let's go back to the question then. So post-show rebound, are you guys, let's say on stage, you weigh 250, right? Whatever yeah. it is. And your off season is 280, 290. When you're done a show, are you trying to get back to 290 as fast as you can? Or are you just trying to eat and let your body get there comfortably? I don't like shooting up like that. I mean, I feel very uncomfortable. I find my like energy levels are in the toilet. I don't find, and I also don't find it's like real. It doesn't like stick. It's like the second that that, 
insulin sensitivity and like everything's kind of cooled down, the weight just slowly trickles back down on me anyways. Like I might shoot up to 290 because I, you know, was soaking all that food up really crazy. But then the second things level back out four or five, six weeks after the show, then I'll sneak down to 280, 285, you know, whatever. Like yeah. it'll start to go down. It's like, it's like pulling insulin out. It's like the yeah. second you pull it out, that little bit of extra water and, you know, all that kind of fullness kind of dissipates a little bit, you know, See. um, that's what I, I would just kind of increase slowly, try and maintain as good composition as I can, you know, while slowly stepping up in, in yeah. realistic increments. You know? how, how important do you guys think individuality is in the sport? Because, you know, we talk about hard and fast rules and sometimes I don't know if there is, because when you're saying that, Ian, when you're saying that, when you're describing your rebound, I think to myself, man, I used to finish a show and I would get to 290 as fast as I could. And I've done that a ton of times. And, and then, and it, but yeah, but then, but my body stays there. Oh, no. I and, and then I just get leaner through the rest of the offseason. Like, I'll, it takes a long time, but it like goes slowly. Yeah. And the 290 will look better and better and better as the months go by. Yeah. And that's kind of how yeah. it's always worked for me. I, I went from 250 to 290 over a period of six to seven weeks post show. Then I'd maintain it. If I shot it from 250 to 290 in three, four weeks. You know, and I'm, I'm fucking my, you know, feet are all swollen shit. And my pumps are so ridiculous. My face feels all swollen. I you love know, that feeling. That, that never stays. I hate it. I love that. It's amazing. <laughs> I, just, I, 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 just I, have, I have loved it. I have loved it. But, but I, I'm in a position I'm in, like you two are both champion bodybuilders. Yeah. I, I, I'm doing what I know I have to do to improve now. And I know that I only improve when I'm as strict as I can be. Yeah. Yes. I think if I had a couple of victories under my belt, I'd be getting fucking fat. Well, like I probably would. I probably would. Because yeah, I think it goes because, the opposite because once you have a couple of wins on your belt, especially from my mind, then you think yeah. you need to you want more. more. You want more. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, so yeah. it is fucking very individual. I actually he's right, he's right, because I actually got you know, people are I don't know how much people are gonna respect this, but in my career when it came to food, I was always a ninety percent guy. Yeah. I was like a ninety ten. I'm like, I want to enjoy or even sometimes 80, 20. I'm like, I'm going to, I didn't, I didn't ever feel like being perfect would have made me that much better. Okay. So I was like, you know what? I like what I'm doing. I feel like I'm successful. I don't think I would be dramatically better if I like suffered throughout an entire off season and I hated my life. Yeah, so I yeah. just, so I just did what I liked because it, I kind of felt like it was working for me. Yeah. So, and at the end of the day, that formula proved to work. Well, if I go back and look, like some people could say, well, maybe if you were more strict, you would have been like uh, fifth at the Arnold instead of sixth or fourth at the Arnold instead of but sixth. would it be worth that? That's what I think to myself is I'm like, okay, maybe you're right. Maybe I would have been fourth, but my life would have sucked for eight months. Yeah. Instead, I enjoyed myself and I took sixth. I'm like, is it worth the two placings, right? If, and, if, that's, and that's only you can decide that. But that's what I'm saying. But if somebody said to me, hey, you were sixth, you could have won. That's different. Yeah, then I would have been like, okay, maybe I would have suffered. But I don't yeah, think yeah, my yeah. I don't think my physique was of the caliber that that extra ten percent of suffering would have put me into like an Arnold winning circle. Like so, Flex Wheeler. Yeah. So it's like that's what I'm saying. So I just feel like I I did what was the best for my body, I think. Okay. So I respect that. And I think the honesty is very uh important for people to hear that listen to the show because some people are gonna be in a position like that and they're gonna face that question themselves. Yeah. They could be really good. Or they could be even better, but at the cost of their own kind of happiness in a certain extent. And, yeah. you know, if they're happy being good, then let them be good and just enjoy it. But in, in saying that, I think there's a level of, I think there's a time and place where you say, you know what, I'm going to suffer more this year. But you have to understand what the end result is. If the end result is only going to be, if you're suffering this much more, but yeah. your, your end result is only this much better. Yeah. It's like you have to make that. Yeah, if that's, if that's if that's like fucking William Bonnach at the Olympia being second, yeah, or being first, then it's worth it. That's yeah, that's a big deal, but, right? But yeah. but but if, it, but if it's you know fucking being fourteenth or or twelfth, yeah, or twelfth, yeah, then yeah. maybe it might not be worth it. I don't know. That's down yeah. to the individual again, isn't it? So yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's anyway, going, but but going back to the question, it's funny because me and Ian have like completely different strategies for our off seasons, but both work. So. I feel like there's a, an individuality to the sport that sometimes it takes some trial and error on everybody's account to figure out what they like the best and what works the best for their body. Definitely. But, and then so. this is what makes me laugh because we got that question earlier, like what race do you think is the best? Yeah. It's not, it's what human, like what, yeah. Yeah. it's so much programming to it because 
we're yeah. all genetically different but yeah. we're all mentally different and like yeah. and you've all you've all we've all had successes to a certain extent yeah. you two obviously have had major pro wins and yet your approach and your genetics are totally different yeah yeah and that's why i love it because it's like there's nothing more open than what we do like yeah. nothing more you know if anyone can fucking win um, is it weird to listen to people screaming and animals dying through your headphones while you're doing your sets in the gym? Yes, you're a fucked up dude. Yeah, that's I, fucking weird as shit. No, I think he's right. saying like, I don't know what the animals dying is. I think the he's animals saying, dying was enough I think, to take I think that he's saying, out. no, I know, but I think he's saying like, does it bother you if people are screaming in the gym when they're training? The, the, if insane. you like listening to people going, oh, that's fine, but the animals dying is very, very yeah, specific. What the fuck is the animals dying? I think of... he's making an analogy. Let's <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, skip. And what, and what just... animal is it? Is it like a fucking. We'll just skip you know... it. We'll just skip it. We'll just skip it. <laughs> <laughs> You're a strange guy. Yeah, fucking weird. That was weird. <laughs> um, do you track your chicken cooked or raw? This constantly comes up. I wish you guys would yeah. stop asking me this fucking question. Just what whatever you do, do it the same every time. Yes, yes. I Thank you. Cares. Thank yeah. you. It doesn't. It's That's fucking irrelevant. It's fucking you do it irrelevant. Raw, raw every day. <laughs> exactly. You know, it's a good. You know, it's a good example. You know, it's a good example of that Ian. I used to have this scale that was off, and I knew it was off because I would go to like the doctor's office, and it would be completely different by like five pounds or something like that. But I didn't give a fuck because it was the same off every day. Yeah, and you yeah. can still gauge the the variance day to day. So I knew exactly. if I I knew if I was losing weight during my prep because it was still the fucking same scale. Yeah, exactly. Sense. My so, scales are like my scales are a bit iffy whiffy, but I know that the the, the, the differentiance is. I mean, is like to insane. answer this question, James and I both measure our food raw. Who had probably measures his food cooked? We're all fucking yeah. good. Who fucking cares? Yeah, and, and I never used to. I used to. I used to before Patrick weighed my meat, not raw, and it didn't. That's all I've done my entire career until Patrick, and now we switched it, and it's no fucking different. So I mean, yeah, it's just, exactly. whatever you do, do it the same every day. <laughs> do it and fucking enjoy it. Stop moaning, guys. You gotta you gotta go on my post and pick up some questions. My phone's not working all of a sudden. Really? Yeah. Go to yeah. go to my go to my post. See this wow. this show. We constantly have technical difficulties in this show. This is it part of the, the show. If I would it. This is part of the show. Yeah. Go to my post and just pick out some questions because so I, I can't. I want to hear what Ian has to say because I'm actually on my phone and I've actually got my laptop in front of me. I'm, I'm the wrong way around today. I'm not on my laptop, but I'm on my phone. I don't know why. Oh, you're on your phone, so you can't look at the posts. Yeah, I don't know why I've done that today. Oh, wait. Mine just, I think they might have just come up. It's, your, it's your, the Instagram or your page is just not working for me either. <sighs> uh, if steroids were only made in suppository form and were each <laughs> the size of your thumb, would you have thought twice about doing them? Still no. probably less painful. Yeah, who cares? Would you rather put a thumb up your butt than a shot? What? Yeah. It ain't going to leave a fucking <laughs> bruise, is it? Maybe I enjoy a little thumb up my butt. You never fucking exactly, know. exactly. You don't know what me and Melissa are doing in our private life. Ah, uh. <laughs> you know what he was doing when he was quarantined. Hey, a little tickle, yeah. a little tickle's okay. Mm. <laughs> to be fair, that would be a lot easier. It would not be easier. You don't want to fucking. What? Sh- How would it not be easier? If you just shoved a little fucking you know, thumb sized caps up your butt and it was just done with. That would oh, yeah, be but, awesome. but if you're doing, but if you're doing like, if you're doing like six different compounds, you got like six thumbs, you got to put up your butt. Yeah, but, no, yeah, but no one said like the amount of compound that's in a suppository. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you, you can might do it get a, a box. You can mix three compounds in one suppository. You, don't know. A, you got a blend. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's fucking funny, man. Really? Could you imagine? I wouldn't mind that. I wouldn't either. I'm all for it. Let's do it. Who's inventing this? <laughs> I'm sure it can be done. Yeah. Uh, would you rather have to hit a leg workout with a catheter in or do a whole prep with no cheat meals? <laughs> that was directed at me because I'm the cheat meal king, but uh, uh, you, guys I mean, can, I, you guys can answer. I, I've just done this whole year with no cheat meals, so obviously it's fucking an easy one for me. Yeah, Patrick I, doesn't do cheat meals. Yeah. Listen, I've done a prep with no cheat meals before. I've done a few, so I, I don't want to put a catheter in and do legs. Uh, I, I actually had to self-catheterize for a while. Oh. You had to self-catheterize? Self-catheterize. I had, a, I had an overactive bladder when I was younger, and I had to have a, 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 an operation, like an internal. They basically put a, a camera down my fucking penis into yeah. my bladder and injected my bladder with Botox. To, yeah. calm, to calm it down. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and wow. I had that done when I was like early 20s. Uh, because of previous uh, conversations we've had. Yeah. So I had that done. And for like six weeks after, I had to catheterize every single time I needed to piss. Oh. So you yourself had to go. Me, I, had to feed, I had to feed the tube down the old Japsai. 
Are you serious? My yeah. jaw's <laughs> yeah. Honestly, it was it was crazy. And I tell you, it was like this. The catheter was about this long. Yeah, they're long as fuck. They're like two feet. Yeah. You, you that... put it in. You can put it in, and you can feel it tickle your bum. Oh my god! Your prostate gets a little scratch. You're like, dude, that's a fucking. You're a. That's a man's man, dude. I could do that on, shit. Bro. Bro. What happens if you don't catheterize? What would have happened? The, the piss would just build up because you, you can't contract your bladder. Oh, because your bladder was Botox. I'll, I'll just look like this. Yeah, yeah. So you have to put oh. the catheter in to get the piss out. Literally. Yeah, you have toxic shock. For how long did you have to do that for? I think it was like six weeks. Oh, my God. And you probably had to piss like three times a day at least. Four oh, or five. Easily, easily. Yeah, easily, easily. Holy fuck, James. I, and I did all this while I was bodybuilding. That's the funny thing. Like, I managed to still win shows somehow. Like, as a junior, I was like... <laughs> That's why I was like, that's why I never gave up at this because I've done some weird shit when I was like, what did you do? Go other. backstage when you had to piss and like put a catheter in? I, l- luckily, that by the time the show came about, I wasn't having to do that. But did it help you get more dry? Because you could probably ent- <laughs> empty it. Oh, yeah, because I could, I could empty it fully. Yeah, what a just fucking like... bodybuilding question that is. Could you get more dry? Yeah. Maybe we should start doing this. Maybe we should just like pre show, <laughs> like, for <laughs> desert, you know? Hey, man, Mate, I'm always, honestly, I'm always thinking. Uh, like, because, you know, <laughs> yeah. uh, again, like on, and I'm not going to go too into the previous conversation we had about the whole bed wetting issue I had when I was younger, but that lasted into my bodybuilding as a junior, and I won the junior British championship still with that. Wow! So I, I can't believe I, I, it. I had. To, let me just tell this really quickly because yeah, yeah, mad. go ahead, yeah, and go I don't ahead. give a fuck. Take your time. I literally the night of doing the British, it was a two day show because obviously yeah. there's a pre-drug thing. I had to sleep on a chair, yeah, like that, with a fucking black bag taped around my my cock so that I would piss into that bag because when I fall asleep there's too much of a risk of me ruining my tan because I had the bed I had I had the bedwetting problem when I was 19 that's right that's right so I remember watching X Factor and having a fucking uh, dry white wine and yeah. falling asleep and coming up with this, this this like kind of idea and it saved me and I won the show wow so you know you you if, no excuses <laughs> no excuses no no excuses motherfuckers jesus holy fuck james but that's why i always look back and i'm like wow like if you can do that like bodybuilding is fucking easy man come yeah on. if you want to make it work you can make it work yeah, that's right. yeah, fucking, yeah come on yeah of course we can um thinking of that do you guys you guys didn't you guys hear all the stuff that samson have to go through oh mate it's crazy isn't it like he's a, he's a warrior yeah it's insane man he is a warrior i respect um, that guy a lot He's getting ready for Spain too. You got some good competition coming up, James. It's going to be a good one. It's it's Samson, good one. I think Reagan, I think uh, Raphael. Be Raphael. What did you Lucas say? Osmodil. Lucas, Lucas Osmodil. Wow, it's going to be a deep lineup, eh? I, I don't feel too. I don't feel too bad because. This did you is say Ram? Did you say Rami? Oh, he what can the turn up. What Rami be doing? He's there, and he's in that side of the world. Yeah. So, uh, Lucas, I I beat Lucas in Romania, fortunately. Yeah. Which is a good for me. It was fantastic. So. He's, he's a very good bodybuilder. Granted, he weren't his best, but I've done it. Yeah. Milan, Sadiq Milan's going to be there. I managed to pip him in England, so I'm fucking still feel like I can. Rafa, I managed to beat in Spain. Um, so it's really just me and, like, I'm not saying I'm, but uh, the one person I've got, like, you know, I need to kind of try and fucking take is your boy Sam. So, well, but what about, it, well, Regan, Reg, Regan's going to be impressive too. Yeah, Reg, I, I, Regan will be impressive, but I think I can take Regan. I, like he's my, Regan's, uh, just, uh, Regan's really good from the back, but his conditioning's not crazy good from the front, and he's still lacking some spots from the front. I think he, his back is exceptional. Like it, he's got the best tie-ins. He's got the best, best tie-ins. Think, back, crazy, crazy good. The front is not up to snuff. He, he, I think he's if, got. He's like he's like Lunsford in the back development department where yeah. the things just insert. But yeah. I just, I, I just personally think I've made it. I think I've made enough progress to be able to beat people that have beaten me before. That's all. I'm not yeah, saying no, take anything away from anyone. I just think that. Hopefully, I can pip the win because I got to win yeah. a show at some point. Yeah, I don't disagree with you. I just, I just like yeah. playing playing the game of thinking. Oh, of course. Win. So, yeah, I think, um, I think if Reagan can get his conditioning better than his previous shows, I think he will be dangerous. He will get it out, and he will get it out. He will yeah. because yeah. he knows that, and if he knows that, he's going to do it. So, yeah, um, yeah. he'd be is, very is, good. Is Dorian coaching him into the show? I believe so. Yeah, yeah. I believe so. Yeah. Dorian's learned a lot and done really well with these guys. Like, if you look yeah. at like Antoine and you know, they're all they're all definitely making massive improvements. So, yeah, it's it's going to be just a case of a good show and who's fucking on the the right guy on the day. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, okay, we'll do a couple more. Um, do you homebrew, and what are your thoughts on it? No, <laughs> no. 
Zero percent. Home brew. No Am I lost? Am I like do, you make, do you make do you make your own gear? Oh no, no. no. Okay, good. Fuck that. Um, would you rather place top three in the Olympia every year for ten years, or win the Olympia once and never place higher than fifteenth ever again? So you have to go back and then not, not yeah. place. Yeah, I wouldn't. Money, I do money that. wise, you're making more money pacing in the top three yeah. that many times. Yeah, you know, and you're consistent. Third place at the Olympia is what 150,000. So. Yeah, I mean, you'd be making way more money that way. I mean, you're not getting, like, the prestige of having an Olympia title, but if you're just talking money, and if yeah. you love the bodybuild, you want to continue competing, I mean, I'd probably go with the third place 10 times or whatever it was. I would. Imagine the emotion of winning and then not being able to be yeah. in place. Yeah. Fuck that. I want the trophy. I win. I, I take the win. Yeah, but you've got to give, and then you've got to keep going back. And I don't give the, a shit. The... You, could, you could sit here and be like, ah, I'm third place in the Olympia. Like, so what? I got the fucking win. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't know. It, it would... It would hurt me just having to keep the going brag, back off the and bragging, back on win. The bragging rights. Melissa, what would you do? I would rather be third all the time. Yeah. Fuck that. Yeah, I'm the same. I'm the same. <laughs> I want the fucking win. I want to be one of the, the 13 or 14 or whatever, how many Olympias there are. I'd be like, I'm number 14. I don't care. Next yeah. year, I can, you, you can oh, have it next retire. year. If you could just retire on the back of that. No, I'll take 15. I don't now, care. Though, with, with social media and shit, if you won one, then sucked after everyone would think it was a fucking fluke and you'd get no respect for it anyway, so... I don't care. I would still have the trophy. <laughs> it's like it's like it's like you said about New York, right? Everybody shits on you, but it doesn't matter because two months later they forget, and you're still the New York winner. Yeah, exactly. Right. So I'd rather be the Olympia winner. I mean, fuck, that's crazy. How many Olympia winners are there? None. There's like fucking thirteen guys out of how many thousands and thousands and thousands of bodybuilders have tried to become great, and they all suck. How many um thirds did they say ten? Uh yeah, mate, that's pretty fucking impressive, though. I didn't say it's not, but you're still not Mr. Olympia. Think about it. You're, like Dexter, like Dexter's Mr. Olympia. It doesn't matter how great he is. Doesn't matter how many shows he's won. He's Mr. Olympia. That's the yeah, only, he, that's the top win. Yeah, yeah but, but he's like, not, he's not like fifteenth now every year. <laughs> yeah, he's placing well every year. But like, think of someone like Flex Wheeler or Kevin. Like these guys are known as like the greatest guys of all time. None of them ever won Olympias. They were up in the top groups all the time consistently, but they never won. And a lot of them, honestly, people, you know, think of Flex Wheeler higher than they think of Dory in a lot of ways. You know? I agree. Yeah. I agree with you. But when I, sometimes when I see Flex Wheeler in interviews, you can see that there's that glimmer that like he was almost there and oh didn't get there. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, that's almost bittersweet to be like, I was so close and didn't touch it. Okay, but this is, this is different because are we, are we getting to make the choice and you know you're never going to win it, and you're going to come third because that's different. Yeah, intending to try and win. No, no, no. This guy's saying you. This guy. Listen, you turn pro tomorrow. Yeah. And somebody came to you and said, "This year you're going to win the Olympia, and then you're never going to win again. Yeah. You're going to be 15th place every year. You can still go to the Olympia. I could. Or you could be third every year for the next 10 years. Yeah, third for 10 years, 100. percent I'd rather win, and then I still get to go. I still get to be 15th. I'd be like, I win, and then I still get to go and be yeah, there. Yeah, but it's not even 14th. At least, like, 14th, you get that, like, 4K check that's, like, for fine. Right? <laughs> 15th, you're not getting anything, you know? It's true. It's true. I want the Sandow. I want the fucking trophy on a fucking mantle. You guys can have all the fucking money you want. I don't give a fuck. I'd be like, I'm Mr. Olympia. I don't yeah, give but a I'll, I'll have a mantle with fucking 10 nice yeah but yeah, i can exactly, but exactly. i can say but i can i can go home and be like here's a trophy i'm better than all the guys you just named flex wheeler kevin lebroni sean ray it doesn't matter you're mr olympia yeah. that's literally like you're being like you're li literally yeah. being like a fucking ice cube, like i like a vanilla ice of bodybuilding you know you're like the biggest so, so <laughs> <laughs> you know? I think it's a good question. I think it's a good question. It is, it is a very good question. I I'd think, be to see what people say. I think logically, let me say this. I think logically, you guys, you guys are right. Like you're going to make more money. You're going to be more popular. You're going to have, but if we're talking about uh, emotionally or just having like the bragging rights, you can't, it's, it's, it's kind of like the answer is there. Because for me, I would at this point in my career, like think of myself, I don't think I'm probably ever going to win Olympia. So a third place 10 times at Olympia to me is still an overachievement. That and I'm getting really 10 good. of those. I'm getting money. I'm getting popularity. It's like what I can do after I retire with that kind of, you know, name. It's yeah. like, fuck, that's worth a lot more to me. And that's already exceeding what I personally thought I would ever get. So but think like, about it. If you won, if I, if I won the Olympia this year, right? Yeah. And then this guy told me like, you're going to be 15th every year the year after. Yeah. 
at least for four years, people would still think I could win. So like you'd still have like a residual following. Well, no, because if you came third, <laughs> if you came first, then came the next year and came fifteenth, you'd be out of the discussion so fucking. Quick. No, no, no. If I win though, like the scenario is if I win, right? Let's say I won to this year, right? And I'm Mr. Yeah. Olympia. Like if if Brandon Curry, right, wins. He won yeah. last year. Yeah. And then let's say Brandon Curry takes fifteenth every year from now on. Yeah. He's still fucking Mr. Olympia. And he's gonna have some residual following from his Mr. Olympia win. My 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 head's thinking about the situation. My head's thinking about like classic, for example, like the first winner. Yeah, yeah. like Danny Hester. Yeah, who thinks about him? No, but it's not the same. Winning, no, wait a minute. No, but it, it is to us. Winning, winning the classic Olympia to is us. not the same as winning the Olympia Olympia. No, but it, but but the, the the scenario and how you feel is the same. Like no one's talking. Like it's like, it's like being a Samir Benut. It's like no, being... it's not. Th- <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> I think we're all valid on this. Ian, you, just, just, um, you, know, on that one. Ian, you just keep digging that ditch, dude. Fuck. <laughs> Sorry, Samir. Fuck. You're going to, everybody from like the previous year is going to yeah, hate. Yeah, we're going to have Velos and Sean Ray yeah. and fucking Samir. They're all going to hate me. Yeah. Okay, let's take Samir Banu. So he wins and then he never wins again. He's still on the mm-hmm. fucking, on the list of Olympia, of yeah, Mr. Like Olympia. 99.99% of people that even compete nowadays don't even know who the fuck Samir Banu is. And who would you rather be, Flex Wheeler or Samir Banu in terms of popular Flex Wheeler, 1,000%. That's a good point. Yeah. But it's, I don't know. That's the point. That is the point. We've cleared this up. <laughs> it's, a, it's a tough one. I mean, it's really hard, yeah. I don't think, it hasn't cleared up in my mind because there's something to be said for saying at at, at, su- at at one point in time I was the best I was the best in the entire fucking world nobody could stand with me that's a big fucking thing to say even if you sucked every year before and every year every after, after for one fucking moment you were the best in the entire fucking world yeah like that's huge now it now imagine now incredible. imagine being now imagine being fucking Ronnie Coleman having eight of those <laughs> I know yeah. right holy fuck yeah. how the fuck how the fuck you know what I always think about Ronnie? Bill could have eight this year. You know, what I, uh, you know what I always think about Ronnie is how diligent he was. Because like, think about what you just said, Ian. You said, I'll probably never win an Olympia. But you're kind of in the same situation Ronnie was. And Ronnie went on to win eight Olympias. Yeah. So I'm not saying you're going to win eight Olympias, but I'm just saying for him to have the staying power and the mindset to keep going and then become the greatest. Yeah. Imagine like the mental toughness it took to just keep I, I, cashing yeah. it out, right? This is kind of a sidetrack, and I just got to ask this just out of sheer curiosity. Would you trade where Ronnie is now in his like health and his like mobility for those eight Olympia titles? I've been asked this numerous times. I, would. I think you would say yes. Yeah, you suggested it. Yeah, I said yes before. I think me and Luke had this conversation. Luke, I think Luke said no. I wouldn't. I mean, look, if, I could, if, I, if you ask me if I could trade between Jay and Ronnie, I'd rather be Jay. Me too. Right? Yeah. But if you said to me, would you rather just be Ronnie with the Olympias or no Olympias, right? I don't know what the other scenario would be, but uh, I don't know, man. Like, there's something about putting it all on the line yeah. and being the greatest in the world. That's- I agree. And, and, and long past Ronnie's dead, Ronnie will still be the fucking goat, and we'll talk about him 50, 60, oh, yeah. 100 years from now. His name is eternalized, 100%. Yes, yes, so that's yes. the one thing that I think he has versus a lot of other Mr. Olympias that's kind of in that elite group with, like, the Arnold, the him, you know, like those guys that are, like, completely eternalized. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, like, I just look at it in the perspective, like, man, like, you know, if I was 40, 45 years old and I'm retired now, I can barely fucking walk, you know? Like, me and Melissa, you know, say I want to have kids. You got young kids now. You can't run around with your kids. You know, like you're going to have be living in pain every day. Like that's a lot to take. And I look, I completely admire the like that he put it all in the line mindset. And I mean, I'm all for that. I think if you love something and you have a goal that you should put it all in the line. But like. Okay, but wait a minute. Uh, uh, let's, let's just take it back to scale then. Here's, there's a perfect example. Somebody says to you at the beginning of your bodybuilding career, like, like every, okay. Let's get into something a little more seriously really quick. We won't take forever doing this, but at the beginning of all our careers, I think we all made a choice, right? You're like, we're going to, we're going to probably risk a little bit of our health to do this thing that we love. Yeah. So essentially you're doing the same thing. It's just on a smaller scale. You're saying I might 
look, I'll speak for myself. I won't speak for you guys. I might, maybe I might not get to, I might not get to 70. I might not get to 60. I might not get to 50. But I'm, I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about the time he's t- taken off his life. I'm talking about now that he might still have 20 years of life, 30 years of life. And that's no, 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 but wait a minute. It, it goes on the same road. Life, no, yes. no, no, but wait a minute. It, it still goes into the same vein, right? Because I made a decision to have a little bit of risk to do this thing I love. And he did the same thing and he made his choice. And what I'm saying is I probably would have made the same choice because I have, I just made, it just hasn't, I haven't achieved all he achieved. No, I, and I see what you're saying, but we're looking at it from the outside of having the two options and seeing the outcome. You know, you're still living in, we're still in a world where we're like, I can potentially not be, you know, like, not. So you're saying if somebody, like a cripple essentially, you know. So you're saying if somebody asked me and told me already at the end, so I already knew. Yes. So somebody like yeah. when I turned pro, somebody said, you're going to win eight Olympias, but when you're 45, you're probably not going to be able to walk. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna be in a, in a wheelchair and in chronic pain for the next thirty years that you will live. You're gonna die at seventy five years old. You're gonna be twenty five years of chronic pain, but you'll have eight Olympia titles. Pick one. You do that, or you just not compete. Yeah, but I mean, I don't know if it's a, it's just not a fair question. It's it just not, it not? it's not a fair question because then you got to look like okay, look at look at like a, a rich piano. Mm-hmm. Rich piano lived his life. He was competitive and then his life was cut short and he didn't get to do any of those things. So like there's, I mean, I guess what I'm trying to say is you never fucking know. So, oh, which I completely agree with, but, but I guess the scenario not, you're saying is if you knew, we do know. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's a hypothetical. I don't, I don't know if I could, you're right. I don't know if I did know for sure. I don't know if I could do it. That would be tough. Yeah. Not knowing, of course, we all take those risks. We all, it's all part yeah. of, it could happen to any of us. And, you know, we assume that risk the day we all started putting our, you know, our bodybuilding as our, our primary focus, but yeah, knowing 100% as a hypothetical situation, that would be the outcome. That would be very tough to choose for me. Yeah. Yeah. It is very, very tough. Cause you got to think it's not just the pain in the wheelchair. It's like going to the doctor all the time and like just all the... constantly. How many surgeries had like fucking yeah. 15 back surgeries. Yeah. 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 And that's what then- it all comes down to. I mean, it's like, it's like, yeah, and this is a fucking horrendous analogy, but sorry. It's like putting your pet down, you know? It's like, would you rather them be alive and be in pain? It's quality of life, right? Quality of life is what is important, you know? Yeah, For me, yeah. and like, if I had the, the, the this is maybe really mean towards Ronnie, but like, if you're looking at two bodybuilding circumstances, like I could win eight Olympias, but then the second I'm done, you know, at 50 years old, I drop dead of a heart attack. I'm just done, dead. Or you have to live in chronic pain for 25 years after. It's like, that's kind of a close fucking draw for me. You know? No, no, it's not. I think, I don't I know, think, man. I, I, think, could, I could not live. I could not live in that kind of like, but imagine, know, but wait a minute on people being in that kind of pain. That's a fucking lot, man. Yeah. But imagine you had like, I think he's got like six kids. Yeah. Right. Do you want to be around? Do you want to be around? Also, do you know what makes it a difficult one? I think a lot of what's happened is as a response to after the, the situation he's in now didn't happen immediately. It's something that after his career ended, some maybe perhaps a little bit it's silly choices have been made in response to some of the surgeries that have made them worse. Yeah. So the first surgery could have been done. I don't know. Again, I don't know too much, but the first surgery could have been done. And if things were taken uh, and treated and uh, done in a certain mm-hmm. manner, all of the ones after would have been maybe not even had to have happened. So yeah. it's a very tough question because I don't know if his career, I don't really think his career has put him in this situation. I think the decisions after the career, because he loves training. So I wonder, he, gets, he gets the surgery and then the next day he's like, yeah, buddy, he goes down the gym. You know, and, part then, of the, and, then, you know, and then that's where the injuries have happened. You know, part of the problem with this question is all yeah. of us, all of us have probably been speculation. No, no, no. All of us have probably been sick and we know what it feels like to be sick. We know what it yeah. feels like to be in pain. And yeah. then we, so we imagine Ronnie in that type of pain times 10, right? Mm. But none of us know what it feels like to be Mr. Lillard. Yeah. Yeah. But what I'm saying is it's easy for us to make the choice. Yeah. We know what the shitty part feels like. Of course. I don't know what it feels like to be Mr. Olympia for eight fucking years. Yeah. So maybe if I, I, think, if I, I knew what that felt like, I would be able to have a better understanding of what I yeah, want. Yeah. Maybe when he, he looks at the Sandos, that's enough. Yeah. I, I disagree. And I, I've seen this with, 
I think that accolades like that are extremely fleeting. I think you have your moment in the sun and then you sit mm. at home alone and it means nothing to you in a lot of cases. And I think it's an extremely like high, high for a minute. And then it's like, well, that's it. I've accomplished everything. There's nothing more now, you know? Yeah. It's yeah. Tough but that, that, but that's a, but that's a gratifying feeling. Like I for achieved, months, every, I achieved for months, forever. I don't know, like, but for, for the rest of your life. Cause you're like, I, 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 I achieved, you can literally sit there and say, I've achieved something that nobody else, well, Lee Haney, but yeah, I am the greatest of all time. Like nobody ever in their right mind that knows bodybuilding will say anybody's better than Ronnie Coleman. I agree. hundred percent. So yeah. there's also something to be said for that. Like, I don't think it's as easy a decision as saying, no, I don't, I, I don't ask, it's a hard question. Yeah. yeah. It's a very tough question to answer. Cause <laughs> this, this question will be going on again. Like you said, with Ronnie's name in a hundred years. Yeah. And you know what? Everybody's going to give a different, a different answer because every, everybody has something that's different and more valuable to them. Right. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, on a personal, your personal if you, outlook. If you asked me this five years ago, I would have said that I fucking would take the eight Sandows, and I wouldn't even think about the question. But the yeah, older I get, like yeah. you know, I think about my life and like you know things I want to do, and you know, have Melissa and have want to have kids, and I got my dogs. Like I think about those things, and I'm like, fuck, you know, like that's a lot, you know. And I have a lot of responsibility, and I have a lot of people that care and depend on me, and I need to be there for. And I don't. Uh, and I, I, and that's another thing with this question: we can only speak from our own experience and own feelings. That's it. Yeah. yeah yeah so Ron, ronnie's the only one that can fucking answer the question like if you had if you had ronnie here yeah. and i know i know i know ronnie's been asked the question before and he says without a doubt he would do the same thing again so mm -hmm. i don't know if we take take him for his word or we take him for somebody who just doesn't want to act like he has i think we ha i think our, i think we have to take him for his word because he is ronnie Coleman. <laughs> yeah yeah interesting uh, i think the one thing we all do agree on though is if we had a choice to be you know, Ronnie Coleman, Phil Heath, or Jay Cutler, we would probably take the Jay Cutler, Phil Heath route. Because Jay, they, Jay, Jay has smashed it. Jay well, all day, twice on Sundays. No, no, of course, but I'm saying, like, Phil is in that same vein. He's still seven Olympias, still very healthy, very successful. Yeah, he's not viewed in the public eye like Jay is not even close. Oh, no, 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 that, I agree with 100%. Yeah, I, just mean, yeah. I just mean – I just mean um From I a health mean, standpoint. I mean as far as, like, health and success. Yeah. Those yeah. two have, like – you know, even if you, look at, even if you look at Dorian, I mean, Dorian's – it's pretty doing all right, really, isn't he? Dorian's like doing, doing yoga, doing yoga and shit. What's that? Yeah. Success wise, like post current, like post retirement, no one's done it like Jay. No, no, no. I know, but I'm saying like just like you were saying, quality of life. Like if you look yeah. at Dor if you look at Dorian, oh, he looks oh, like he's fucking Dorian's like doing yoga yeah. and fucking bike riding and shit, and he's yeah. like just yes. living like this euphoric life. Yeah, 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 so, definitely. Anyway, all right, guys, we're gonna wrap it up. It's been a couple hours, so I appreciate <laughs> you guys coming on. Sorry, Thank James, you. if I kept you too long. No, not too, not too. I had my food. Sorry, I ate during, but you know. Crap. No, it's okay. I got on here. I thought it was going to be a twenty-minute podcast because I felt like hell, but I kind of, I think the coffee woke me up. So, anyway, oh, nice, nice. Thank you very it's much, guys. See, we'll, uh, we'll catch up again. Yeah, we'll see you, gentlemen. Okay, guys. Bye, bye. Peace. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, share with your friends, and like the video. And if you get a chance, check out the description for all the different links to all the different places you can find Hostile and myself. And lastly, check out Hostile.com for our new line of supplements and all of our apparel and gear. Thanks again for watching.